Good afternoon and welcome now to the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. I'm Frankie Castillo. Glad to have you alongside this afternoon with Mules Basketball later on today. But today is an exciting afternoon in high school basketball here in Popper Bluff as we're going to bring you every game live exclusively right here on our Facebook page at Today's Talk KWOC as well as on our YouTube channel it is at river radio pb that is river radio pb all you've got to do is make sure and go to our youtube channel subscribe and like our facebook and you'll be able to uh, see all of our video streams here this week coming up i've got tim hicks who is directly to my left He'll be behind the camera. He's got the scoreboard ready to go. And, of course, we're going to gear up to bring you exciting coverage of this year's showdown. It is an uh, unusual showdown. We did have two teams that have to drop out because of COVID-19. If you look at your screen right now, you are seeing the schedule for today. Some really good ball games coming up. The first contest is going to feature Fayetteville taking on Haywood. Two very good teams. Later on at 5.30, it is Southside against Overton. 7 p.m., Popper Bluff is going to take on a team out of Arkansas, Forest City, Arkansas. We have been told coming up at 7 p.m. or during the Bluff and Forest City contest, we're going to be honoring one of the late coaches of Forest City. We're also going to be honoring one of our very own Maurice Webb, who lost his life earlier this year. He played at Popper Bluff. His, he's got kids who has played at Popper Bluff. We're going to have all that coming up later on tonight. As you're watching Haywood coming out on the floor now, as we are under eight minutes away until we tip off coming up the first game of this year's Popper Bluff Showdown. And we're going to be checking our comments all afternoon long. Now, later on, I will tell you, later on, if you're going to switch over to the radio side of things, we are going to be doing radio coverage coming up. But that will not be until we get to the Popper Bluff and Fayetteville or Four City game. And that will be coming your way at around 7 p.m. later on today. In the meantime, what we are doing right now is we are gearing up for this contest between two very good teams, Fayetteville. They have been here before. And, of course, you look at Haywood, a team out of Tennessee. They're going to come in here very strong as well. So we are looking forward to a couple of really good ball games here in the very first afternoon of this showdown. And, of course, there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not we were going to be able to even have this game coming up today just because of COVID-19 and where we were. But what we're going to do is we're going to get to our social media pages right now. If you don't mind, if you are watching us on YouTube or on Facebook, drop us a quick comment and let us know that you can see everything coming in nice and clear and you can also hear the audio as well. We're kind of flying blind here. Normally what we do is we've got the radio going as well at the same time. But in this first game, we are just doing the video only coming up today. A couple of key matchups that we're going to be watching out for today. You look at this Haywood team. They are a, a good team. They're being coached by Rodney Chapman. He is in his third season so far this year. The Tomcats of Haywood, they are coming in four and five. We had a banquet earlier on today, and Coach Chapman made it very clear. He feels like this team is here to compete, and there's a team they're going to face later Later on this week in Southside, they've already faced Southside one time earlier this year. It literally went back and forth. And, of course, we'll see what happens later on when those two meet up later on this week. Looking at Taquarius Douglas, he is a six foot two senior. He is coming in this contest. As well, you look at uh, Tylen Chapman. He is averaging 18 points a ball game. Also, the junior forward, Janarius Snipe, he is averaging 15 points a ball game to go along with 10 rebounds. And then at junior guard, Jamari Person, he is averaging just under 11 points. That is a quick glimpse of this team out of Haywood. And we'll see what they have in store for Fayetteville. 
you look at Fayetteville coming in. They took third in a tournament in Springfield, Missouri earlier this season. They lost to Kickapoo 74-72. By the way, they are the defending Class 6 state champions in Missouri, and they are ranked 7th in the latest state coaches poll. Now, the Bulldogs, who were also ranked 6th in their class recently, they beat Lafayette, Wildwood, and Helias. They were ranked 10th in Class 5 while losing to third-ranked Nixa. Fayetteville's football team, by the way, recently played in a state championship game. So Fayetteville, no stranger to when it comes to good competition. And we're going to be rooting for both teams. The cool thing about doing this here today is it doesn't matter what team you're rooting for. We're rooting for all teams. We are just so excited that we're going to be able to bring you a showdown today. Last year, we couldn't have this showdown because of COVID-19 and everything. Today, it is a much different scenario. We thought earlier this week we may not have a showdown because of COVID-19. We know two teams had to drop, but the administration here in Popper Bluff, man, they have done such an amazing job of getting this tournament ready to go just in time for today. So today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, we are in for some really good basketball. Talking to all the coaches earlier today, all are very just excited that we're able to play basketball here today, and we are going to be able to get this tournament in. We will crown a champion. It's going to be a little bit different this year. It's going to be a little bit of uh, wins and losses, how many points are won by, maybe a coin toss if it all boils down to that direction we'll have it all covered coming up three minutes now until the top of the hour we'll take a quick timeout we're going to come back we will have your national anthem now we'll tell you because of facebook and youtube rules i've got to mute the national anthem only because it is a copyright infringement therefore if we were to play the national anthem in just the national anthem we would probably get shut down for 24 hours we don't want to do that so what we will do in the meantime is during the national anthem we've got to kill the audio for that reason otherwise i would play it we'll have your starting lineups coming up with the voice of this year's tournament kenny hosler he will join us coming up in just a few moments as we count it down to mules basketball here today later on first game though in the showdown it is haywood it is fayetteville we've got basketball coming your way in about 60 seconds you're listening to the 34th annual popper bluff showdown on the southeast sign and graphics mules radio network We are back here as we get set now for this opening round of this year's 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. Let's go down courtside here with Mr. Kenny Hosler. Thank you. 
So there you have it. Those are the starting lineups here for this very first game between Fayetteville and Haywood. Here we go. Our officials for today, they are Pat Sarda. They are Bobby Godwin and Lee Jones. Of course, we appreciate you tuning in, whether it's on social media, our Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel. Make sure and share the video for us. We want to know where you're watching and who you're rooting for here today. Eight minutes now on the scoreboard. Here we go. The official walks to midcourt. Ball's in the air, and we are officially underway. Haywood now. They are going to control the opening tip. Good job right off the bat here as Graham Witte with a big-time steal, and we're going to get a whistle and a foul, and that's going to put Fayetteville on the free-throw line. Quick two free throws coming up here. Good defense off the bat by Graham Witte of Fayetteville, and we get a whistle and a foul on Tylen Chapman. That'll be his first personal foul, and that'll be team foul number one. A free throw is in the air. It is off the mark. It is no good by Landon. Glasper. So 0-1 now, right now on the free throw line for the Bulldogs of Fayetteville. Second free throw, it is up and it is good. 7-46 now to play in the first quarter. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Fayetteville and the Tomcats are going to re-inbound. They throw it in the backcourt. Lot going on here today. We are so happy to have you alongside to Aquarius Douglas. He'll work it outside to the top. Good defense here early by Fayetteville. Good drive in the lane, and they're going to lose it out of bounds. Turnover there by Haywood. So a quick turnover by Chapman, and now Fayetteville is going to recontrol the tempo. Boy, these, these fans here by Haywood, we saw them in the uh, banquet earlier today. They are just so passionate. I don't know if Tim can get a shot of the Haywood fans here. There's not many of them, but the ones that are here, man, they are just incredible. Missed by Haney off the, off the uh, backboard there. Good job by Janarius Snipe on the rebound. Working the other direction now is the Tomcats. Still 1-0 Fayetteville. They lead with about 6.50 left here in the opening quarter. My good friend Marion Tibbs is tuning in tonight with us. Also our good friend Ron Withrow. Ball is on the floor. It's going to go. Oh, they're going to say it was last touched by the Tomcats. And that'll be a turnover on Davis. 6.41 to play here in our first contest of the afternoon. Hope everybody had a Merry Christmas out there and looking forward to the new year coming up. I know we're looking forward to the new year for sure. Good drive, good swipe. Going to be a foul, I believe, by Cord Corduro Walker. And that'll be his first, and that'll be team foul number two. So Fayetteville going to go back to the free throw line. One of two so far today. And it's now 2-0 in favor of the Bulldogs. Landon Glasper now, his second free throw of the ball game. It is up and good. He'll get one more. It is up, and it rims out on him. It's no good. Rebounded by Snipe. So now Haywood only down by two points. Haywood is a very good basketball team. Good bounce pass inside underneath. They'll work it back out to the top of the key now. Good 2-3 zone by Fayetteville. 6 7 now to play in quarter number one. Fayetteville doing a good job on these screens. And there's another takeaway there. Glasper took it away momentarily. A three ball no good. It's rebounded by Witte. So Witte came around with the rebound, a three-point basket the other end. It is up and good by Landon Glasper. And just like that, it is now a 5-0 lead here by the Bulldogs. We get a whistle here and a timeout by Haywood. It is their first timeout of the ballgame. It'll be a quick 30-second timeout. 
We want to thank some of these great sponsors stepping up this year. The Popper Bluff R1 School District allowing us to be here this year to cover all of these games. Our good friends at Super 8 Motel Comfort Inn. Also brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors Holiday Inn. Also being brought to you by Robert Rowland Dentistry Hampton Inn as well as Briggs and Stratton and the Drury Inn. So a quick 30-second timeout here called by Haywood, and we'll see what they've got coming out of timeout. 540 now. It is a 5-0 lead by Fayetteville. Glasper has all five points. We get a whistle, jump ball, and possession is going to go toward Fayetteville. So good job by Sawyer Keith. And we're going to get a sub coming in now for Haywood. Jakari Cornage now is going to come in off the bench for Walker. So with five and a half minutes to play in the first quarter, it is a 5-0 lead here by Fayetteville. Keith works it around the top of the key to Gaines. Boy, this Fayetteville team, they are big and they are physical inside. This one goes off the shoe of Witte, and it's going to go out of bounds. And last touch by Witte, it's going to go right back to Haywood. It is our opening day of the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. We are so excited to be here this season with you to cover this amazing event. It is game one, and there's a quick steal once again by Witte. Glass, well, good job there by the Fayetteville Bulldogs. Fayetteville getting a big offensive rebound, and another big three-pointer. So Gaines with a big shot, and now it is eight to nothing. Gaines with a big three-pointer, 443 to play here in the first quarter. It is eight nothing in favor of it's eight nothing in favor of a heat, or I make that Fayetteville rather. So now four 440 left to go here in the first quarter of play. And right now, oh, what a move inside. That one as Haney goes in off the glass. And now it is a quick 10-0 run to begin this ball game. Fayetteville going to try to settle things down, or I should say Haywood rather, going to try to settle things down just a little bit on the offensive side of the boards. And we're going to get a whistle here and a travel called on Snipe. So far, Fayetteville, they, are, they have begun this game shooting 60% from the field. Three out of five so far. Three assists to go along with those ten points. It has been all Fayetteville in the first four minutes of quarter number one. Turn that crowd mic back on. Gaines with a good shot. He misses the shot, but the tip-in is up, and it is good by Witte. So Witte, another offensive rebound. He'll go up, and he'll put up two points. And now it's another foul coming up. This one will be called on Fayetteville. Believe it's going to be on Glasper. It is Landon Glasper. It is his first. Team foul number one. Kenny Hosler on the PA this afternoon for this 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. Big thank you to uh, Miss Serena Jones. She is the secretary to the administrative secretary to Kent Keith. She's always doing a fantastic job. And there's a big three-point basket on the other end by Snipe. That ends a 12-0 run. Another three ball. This one is off the mark. It's no good. Glasper could not get that one to fall. Rebound comes back down to Snipe. And this one, ball is going to be taken away. And it's going to stay with Haywood following the tie-up. And we're going to get a few subs coming in now. Desmond Gray is going to check in. Jack Eric is also going to check in for Fayetteville. Mason Simpson as well, number 11. Haney stays in the ball game for the Bulldogs. And so does Graham Witte. Under three to play in quarter number one. 12 to three now. The Bulldogs lead this game early. Fayetteville off to a good start. 
Haywood trying to play catch up. Gray underneath. Pull up jumper is good by Janarius Snipe. He was triple teamed and he still made that shot go down. A three point ball is up and it is good by Mason Simpson. Jack Eric on the assist. 12 or make that 15 to 5. Scoreboard is wrong. It says 12 to 8. That is not correct. They gave the three ball to uh, Haywood. And we're going to get a turnover there on number one at Tylen Chapman. The actual score is 15 to 5. There we go. Now they get it changed. So we're taking, we are taking real time stats as they happen. The Bulldogs shooting 56%. The Haywood Tomcats, even though they are down by 10 points, shooting 67%. But here's the kicker. They've only taken so far three shots. They're two out of three. They've got seven turnovers here in the first quarter. That's the biggest difference right now. Fayetteville nearly had another turnover that time. Good job by Graham Whitty. Misses the first jumper. Offensive rebound is no good. And this time the ball is batted around. It'll be taken by Snipe. So Snipe. And there's going to be a steal. And lays it in and scores as Mason Simpson gets the bucket. Graham Whitty on the assist. And now it is 17-5. to Tenarius Douglas, Tequarius Douglas. And this one's going to go out of bounds. Going to be last touched by Davis. Fayetteville now is going to bring in Jackson Berry. He'll come in the ball game. And Graham Whitty is going to take a seat. Whitty has had a great first quarter so far. 17-5 to is the current score. 12-point lead right now. We appreciate everybody tuning in on social media here for this first game. Fayetteville doing a good job going inside. Lays it up. It's no good. Offensive rebound by Barry, but it's going to be lost in transition. Three ball is no good by Chapman. But an offensive board by Davis, but then it's taken away. Janarius Snipe is going to be called for the foul. That'll be his first. And we're going to see him come to the bench. So he will take a seat. Kick ball there. So now for Fayetteville. Going to inbound to Landon Glasner. You betcha. He knocks it down. He's got two more points. Make that seven points now in this game. Three-point basket is good. To Quarius Douglas with a big three-pointer to keep him a little bit close in this game. It's 19-8 to eight now, under 14 seconds. So I'm assuming... Looking down at the bench area, we thought we had a Haywood player that may have went down, but he's going over to the trainer. We'll keep an eye on him. Three-point basket. My goodness, Landon Glasner. As time expires, he makes this a 22-8 lead. Jack Eric with a huge assist. 22 to 8 is the score. We're going to come right back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. Fayetteville Bulldogs lead it 22 to 8 on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. All right, so here we go, back to live action here. It has been pretty much all Fayetteville to this point. Fayetteville is really having no issues early on. 
So we will see if that trend will continue. Landon Glasner right now, he has been the spotlight, so to speak. Ten points already here in the first quarter as we start this second quarter. And there's a steal by Douglas in transition, and he can't finish, but he will draw the foul. Stacy Rommel tuning in this afternoon as well. Glad to have her alongside. And Jack Eric is going to be called for the personal foul. So Tequarius Douglas will go to the free throw line. Rattles the first one in. And that's one thing about this Haywood team. And they are a very good free throw shooting team. Very good free throw shooting team. Second one is up and it is also good. We're going to switch back and forth from Facebook to YouTube. Several tuning in on YouTube here this afternoon. We appreciate those. Whether you're tuning in from Fayetteville or tuning in from Haywood. Ball's going to go out of bounds. The last touch by Haywood. Looks like Jabrian Snipe is going to be the last member it touched. We'll toggle back and forth from Facebook to YouTube all afternoon. Three-point basket by Simpson is off the mark. It is no good, but another offensive rebound by Desmond Gray. And now Fayetteville is going to back it out to the top of the key and reset the offense. It is a 12-point lead by the Bulldogs. They lead the Tomcats here in the second quarter. Three-point basket again. This one is no good. Glasper could not get this one to fall. Good job down low by Snipe. And the Tomcats, and we're going to get a carry. So Sawyer Keith now is going to come back in the ball game for Fayetteville. Desmond Gray takes his seat. Also, Barry takes his seat. And Jack Eric also going to take a seat. Jaden Haney is back in the ball game. Big, big shot this time by Sawyer Keith. Gaines is also back in the ball game as well. Witte comes in. Coast to coast this time at four. Long pass down to Gaines. Now they work it back out top to the top of the key by Glasper. It's no, it's no good. Going to whistle in a foul here on the other end. 6.25 to play in the first half. Be a team foul on a Sawyer Keith for Fayetteville. It is his first team foul number three at the free throw line for Haywood. It is Tylen Chapman. His first free throw goes up and good. He'll get one more. Second one is up, and it's good as well. 25-14. So Haywood making some noise right now. This one nearly goes out of bounds, and it might very well. It's going to be last touch by Haywood. Good defense by Hayes, number 11. So now on the other end, Landon Glasper, 10 points here already. He is not afraid to shoot that three ball. Glasper again. Throws it in, gets it inside to Gaines. Gaines hesitated for a moment, gets back up. It's no good. And we're going to get a whistle here, and it's going to be a foul going the other way. Good job by Snipe to put his body in there and take the rebound. Witte is going to be called for the foul. That'll be his first, by the way. Team foul number four. Oh, good move. Top of the key. It's not going to go. Chapman long three-pointer. It's rebounded by Gaines, and here comes the Bulldogs. Pull-up jumper by Glasper is no good. Glasper, though, is going to be bailed out on the offensive board by Keith. Three-point basket is no good by Haney. And here comes the Tomcats now. They've got momentum right now. I say that, and then they turn the ball right back over. Five at 37 to play here in the first half. Fayetteville leads by 
11, 25 to 14 the score. Long three-pointer by Gaines. This one is no good. It is rebounded by Davis. And here comes Haywood. It's Aquarius Douglas. He's got seven points here in the ball game thus far. Oh, good no look pass there to Hayes down low. This one nearly taken away by Jaden Haney. It's going to stay with Haywood. And we're going to get a sub coming in now. We're going to see Janarius Snipe back in the game. Quickly inbounded. Here are the Tomcats. It's going to be taken away by Haney. And we're going to get a whistle here and a foul. I think it's on Chapman. If it's on Chapman, it's number two on him. It is going to be on Chapman. And that'll be a team foul number four now for both teams. The foul was on the floor. No free throws here. So now they'll inbound the ball to Witte. Witte at the free throw line. Gets it back out to Glasper. Glasper now steps inside the paint. What a move. He could not finish. And the rebound is going to come right back to Davis. And here comes the Tomcats. Good move by Chapman. He misses the shot, but the offensive putback is good. And now it's 25-16. Snipe made that last bucket, by the way. So Glasper again, Landon Glasper, 13 points, just sank another three-pointer. On the other end, you're looking live at Aquarius Douglas, airballs that three-pointer. Haney got the rebound, but then turns it over. So now we're going to get another sub coming in. Cornage back in the ball game for Tequarius Douglas. 4.05 left to play here in the first half. It's 28 16. 28 16 the score. Another turnover. Oh, good job there by the Tomcats. Good defense. Tylen Chapman. Oh, he's going to carry it. They're going to call the turnover on him. So right now, the Bulldogs are shooting 40% so far in the afternoon, 10 for 25. They are 6 out of 12 from behind the arc and 2 out of 4 from the free throw line. Haywood, they are shooting 50%. They're down by 12. But here's the biggest difference. Fayetteville's got 3 turnovers so far. Haywood's got 12. It's a plus 9 right now for Fayetteville. Long three-pointer by Glasper is no good, but the offensive board, man, that should have been a putback by Sawyer Keith. He was at the right place at the right time. Snipe come in with the rebound. And now Snipe gets it inside. Up and good to Davis, and that's a big shot. Davis now on the board. His first bucket. 28-18 to 18 now. Long three-pointer by Gaines, and Gaines it drains it from the top of the key. 31 to 18 now. Good job by Jaden Haney on that assist. This Fayetteville team, they can distribute the basketball. They've got no pizzazz. They just go in and do what needs to be done. A 2.45 to play first half. Whistle and a foul coming up on Fayetteville. It's going to be on Witte. It'll be his second personal for Haywood. We're going to see Chapman taking a seat on the other end. We're going to see Witte taking a seat for Fayetteville and Simpson back in the ballgame. Good move, good swat, good block by Glasper. And we're going to get a whistle here, and it's going to go out of bounds. It's going to be last touched by Fayetteville. So McAfee now is going to check in, number 30, for Cornage. Coming up on halftime, 2.30 left before halftime. 31-18, Haywood is down here in this first half. 
on this opening day of the Popper Bluff Showdown. Lots of basketball going on everywhere. Another turnover by Haywood. Rex Rusher is coming in for coming in for Sawyer Keith. 2.16 to play here in the first half. Big thank you to Popper Bluff R1 School District. What a move by Landon Glasper. He's got 15 points here in the first half. 15 of the team's 33. Two minutes now to play in the first half. Working it around the timeline. McAfee now going in. It's no good. Good offensive rebound by Snipe. And Snipe gets two more points. He's got six for the game. Another two-pointer by Glasper on the other end. Thirty-five twenty. now the score. 15-point lead. Fayetteville nearly caused another turnover. McAfee now works it outside to a snipe off the backboard. It's up and it is good. 35-22 back to 13 points. Simpson, three-pointer off the mark. It's no good. Oh, good job. Good save. It's going to go right back to the Fayetteville Bulldogs. Rex Rusher this time gets the putt back. 37-22 the score. Very fast-paced action in the last minute and a half. Good job by Davis. Davis goes up top. It's no good, but he will draw the foul, and he's going to shoot two free throws. Rex Rusher is going to be called for the personal. That's 16 fouls now. 51 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. Kevion Davis at the free throw line. First one is up, and it is good. It's 37-23 now, the score. And we're going to see coming in, Tequarius Douglas is back in the ball game. Second free throw coming up by Davis. He's got three points in the ball game and misses that one. Simpson with the rebound. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a small short break. We'll reset, get you the scoring breakdown, and get ready for the second half of play. Glasper again. Good job passing it outside to Simpson. 28 seconds. Glasper, long three-pointer. Money. He is really the real deal. Glasper, another big three-pointer. 20 points in the first half. 20 points of the team's 40. Incredible by this young man. 17 is the lead right now. From the free throw line, it is up and good by Douglas. He's got nine points. And that's going to be the end of the half. It is a 15-point lead by Fayetteville. 40-25 to 25 is the score. What a ball game here on opening day of the Popper Bluff Showdown, 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. And, of course, we want to thank some of our great sponsors, the Donut House, Godfather's Pizza, also brought to you by McDonald's Physical, Focus Physical Therapy, also brought to you by Justin's Christian Automotive, Steak and Shake, the Mules Booster Club, KWOC Radio, also brought to you by Mike and Zach's Barbecue, the Scott Law Firm, Papa John's Pizza, Colton Steakhouse, also being brought to you by Popper Bluff Chamber of Commerce, FCA, Skeeter Kale Sporting Goods, Subway, Walmart and Pepsi and as you can see all of our sponsors right there on the old screen those what we have in our showdown it consists of wonderful sponsors to make this happen and of course our Popper Bluff R1 school district also doing an amazing job a year in and year out to make sure that this showdown goes on as best as it possibly can and, of course, last year, we're dealing with it again this year as well. We had COVID to deal with, and hats off to the administration for 
making sure that we have some type of basketball to bring you today, tomorrow, and Wednesday during this showdown. All right, looking at some of the numbers right now, real quickly, let's talk about Fayetteville just a moment. They are shooting 45% so far today, 8 of 16 from behind the arc. They are 15 out of 33 overall, and they are 2 of 4 on the free throw line. They've also 13 first-half assists. That is incredible in itself. They've stole the ball. They've actually had six steals, only four turnovers, 12 rebounds. Of those 12 rebounds, eight of them, eight offensive rebounds by Fayetteville. You start looking at the scoring right now, and we've got to talk about number three, Landon Glasner, Glasper. 20 points, one assist so far in just 13 minutes of ball. You look at some of the other scores. Mason Simpson, he's got five points. Also, number 33, Gaines, he's got six points here tonight to go along with one rebound. And then from there, three points by Sawyer Keith. Two points by Jaden Haney and by Rex Rusher. And, and that is your scoring right now. Also, Graham Whitty, he's also got two points. But it is everything else about the points. You've got, you look at Whitty, he's got three assists, two rebounds. He is all over the floor right now in just ten minutes. Our good friend Ken Hosler, he is uh, doing an amazing job on the PA, bringing us up some uh, other totals here from this ball game. Let's look at some of the scoring breakdown here right now by Haywood. And, of course, you look at what Haywood has done so far in the ball game. They have shot the ball very well, 60% right now. They are 9 out of 15 overall, 2 out of 6 from behind the arc, and 5 of 6 on the free throw line. 14 rebounds, 3 assists, but the big number is the 15 turnovers. That number there is the big number by Haywood. They have got to uh, eliminate coming up in the second half if they want this game to be competitive. You start looking at where the points are coming from on the Haywood side. Janarius Snipe leads the way right now with six points, also five boards so far. And then from there, you've got five points by Jabrian Snipe. And then from there, it's three points by Kevion Davis. Nine points, by the way, by, Tequ by Tequarius Douglas. He leads the way, by the way. Tequarius has nine. It's six by Janarius Snipes. And then two points by Tylan Chapman. And then that is it when it comes to the scoring breakdown. You look at what Fayetteville's been able to do. They're able to get a lot of guys involved. You look at this Haywood team. So far, only five players in the scoring column right now. And then you look at, okay, what have we done as a quarter? And right now, Fayetteville really took over in that first quarter, outscoring Haywood 22-8 to in the first quarter. And then Haywood would come back. They were outscored only 18-17 to there in that second quarter. Other than that, the first quarter erased that a little bit, and then it's a much different ball game. It's sitting at a 15-point lead right now for the team out of Fayetteville and of course coming up here later on we will have for you we will have the second game of our contest and of course the second game of our contest is going to be another good one coming up you've got Southside you've got Overton that one is going to be a good matchup and that's that'll be in game number two of our contest and that'll be coming up directly following this one right here once again we want to say thank you again to all of our sponsors Tim, if you don't mind, you switch that graphic for me and put the sponsors. There we go. We'll get those sponsors up there. We want to say a big thank you to Innovative Orthodontics, also Buffalo Wild Wings, Coca-Cola, Maya's Las Margaritas, also Fairfield Inn, El Acapulco, McLean Transport Company, also being brought to you by Kissinger and Kirkman, C.E. Norton Construction and Plumbing Incorporated, also being brought to you by Dairy Queen, Popper Bluff Regional Medical Center, and Tin Box Cost Plus, all bringing us this incredible showdown coming up for this year. All right, what we will do, we're going to leave our sponsors up on the screen for a few minutes. We're going to take a quick timeout. We're going to come right back. You're not going to hear any audio. 
We will cut the audio for just a few minutes. We're going to come back. We're going to get you reset for the second half. It is a 40-25 lead right now by the Fayetteville Bulldogs. They lead Haywood as we get ready for the second half. Thank you again for tuning in to the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. We are live at the Popper Bluff High School. And, of course, we appreciate all of our viewers today coming in from Fayetteville, coming in from Haywood, wherever you're watching. Make sure and drop us a comment. Let us know where you're watching. And, of course, this is the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. This is the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. All right, welcome back now with about a minute left before we get ready for the second half. The Bulldogs are leading the Tomcats right now, 40-25. Our good friend Eric is tuning in. Remember that name, Tim, in football? He is tuning in from Kenmore, Washington. Glad to have him alongside. Where have you been, Eric? All right, so here we go. We are back to live action right now. It looks like it'll be the same starting five as what we had as we got started here today. So they switch sides. Haywood now is going to have the ball. And, of course, Janarius Snipe, we're going to have to watch him. He has been one of the big factors here 
for this team out of Haywood. Also looking at Fayetteville. They've got several good shooters on the floor at any one time. What a move. Another block there. This one by Witte. Witte will get the credit for the block. And just like that on the other end, Landon Glasper. So it's 42 to 25 now. Fayetteville, they are not letting up the glass at all. Glasper again, you betcha. Glasper, reverse layup. 24 points he has got. He is making a strong case right off the bat to make this all-tournament team. Davis with the rebound. He'll draw the foul. It's going to be on Sawyer and Keith. It'll be his second personal team foul number one here in the half. Boy, Landon Glasper, he is one of those young men from Fayetteville. Every time he touches the ball, things happen to his team, it seems like. First free throw is up, and it is good by Davis. He's got four points here in the ball game. 24 by Landon Glasper. He leads everybody right now. He may wind up and lead everybody today. Second one is up and no good. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. Haney looks around to Witte. Now back to Haney, top of the key. They'll get it inside to Glasper from the elbow. Another jumper. He is on fire today. 26 points by Landon Glasper. My goodness. We are seeing a show here this afternoon. What a move by Tylen Chapman. He goes up untouched and gains it quickly down the other way. Fayetteville, they're not going to let you get set. They're going to come right back. And there's another steal. Oh, they tried to throw it up. The, the, <laughs> the Fayetteville Bulldogs, they tried to throw it up. Just didn't go the way they wanted it to go. Witte is going to be called for his third personal foul. He's going to come out. Also, Hayden Haney's going to come out as well. Desmond Gray back in. And Jack Eric as well. So Chapman misses the shot. Quickly now, as what a move by Dave's by Davis. Davis, another big bucket for him. Davis now has six points here in this game. Gaines now, top of the key, one on one with Davis. And Gaines, his second three pointer of the ball game, and now it's 51 to 30. Quickly high off the glass now, no good by Douglas, rebounded by Glasper, pull-up jumper is no good, the three ball was no good, it's rebounded by Hayes, boy this game is so quick, count the basket and the foul as Walker is able to knock it off the glass and he'll shoot one, got my good friend here, Bill Caputo is standing right here beside me, he's like don't put me on there, I don't want to talk to you. You bet you, coach. Fifty-one to thirty-two, the score. Following Walker on the missed free throw. Chapman got the offensive rebound, and we got an offensive foul now. Love having Coach Bill Caputo come up and talk with us anytime. Let's go over to our social media comments. Eric says they are experiencing record low temps right now. Not here in Missouri, Eric. Good steal. Count the basket and the foul as Douglas with a big steal. Eric, it is a muggy 70 degrees outside in Missouri. What's really weird is by the weekend, we're being told that it's going to it's going to rain pretty much all week. Glasper, by the way, picked up the foul. 
Free throw was no good by Douglas. Rebounded by Gaines. We're going to see rain Tuesday, Wednesday. Another big three ball by Gaines. My goodness. He knocks down another big shot. 54-34 now. We're going to see rain Tuesday and Wednesday. And then again on Saturday, maybe some strong storms in Missouri. But then we could see a little bit of snow coming in by Sunday. It's crazy. Gaines misses the shot. It is rebounded by Douglas. So no, we don't have those we don't have those cold temps yet. It is just bizarre how warm it's been. Christmas it was 75 or make that 77 here in Poplar Bluff. That was a record high. Another steal by Gray. Another turnover by Haywood. Under four minutes now, 54 to 34. Good job there by Haywood. Another block by Davis. So now Mason Simpson back in the game. Sawyer Keith and Glasper is going to take a seat. McAfee. Comes in the ball game to Quarius Douglas will take a seat for the meantime. Gaines double teamed, somehow able to find Haney from the elbow. It's no good. And the ball's going to be batted around and is going to go out of bounds toward the Haywood side. 3.41 to play, third quarter, 54 to 34 the score. We have a ton of folks right now tuning in on YouTube. McAfee from was able to rebound the three-point ball. And we're going to see coming in now for Jackson Berry going to come in for Gaines. Also, Witte will stay out as well. Good job by Fayetteville, able to hold on to it, to keep it in and keep it in play at least for them for the time being. Later on tonight, Popper Bluff will be in action. The home team, the host city, that is. Barry's shot is not going to fall. It's going to be rebounded though by Haywood, and here comes the Tomcats. Long three ball. This was off the mark by Chapman. Jack Eric able to come up with it. Now Desmond Gray working it outside to Haney. Haney now is going to have it lost. Good job by McAfee. And just like that, Chapman goes in and makes the points. He's got six now in the ball game. Another steal by Chapman as Barry turns it over, and we're back the other way. A pull-up jumper by Chapman. He's got eight points, and we're going to get a timeout called by Fayetteville. This one's going to be a full timeout. It's 54-38 to 38 now, the score. Later on tonight, our good friend John Scott will be joining us at some point during the broadcast. So, with that being said, 54 to 38 the score. The Bulldogs right now are shooting 48% overall. They are 21 of 44, 10 of 20 from behind the arc. That's a good number, 50%, by the way. Just 2 of 4 on the free throw line. Seven turnovers so far. The Tomcats, they are shooting very well, 56% as well. 2 of 7 from behind the arc, and they are 6 out of 10 on the free throw line. The biggest difference, you look at Fayetteville, 7 turnovers, 20 turnovers by Haywood. That is a number that's got to change by Haywood. 2.29 to play here in the third quarter. It is a 54 to 38 ball game. And now Fayetteville. Going to inbound here. They're going to go the length of the floor. 54-38 the score now. In our first game of this year's Popper Bluff Showdown. We were just so sad that we couldn't have this last year. So happy that we were able to have this here today, this week. 
A lot of folks, you don't know how much this tournament means to you until you can't have it. Gaines is going down the lane. You betcha he will score two. So Gaines, what a move. He's got 16 points here in this ball game. It'll be Haynes, his first personal. He is going to take a seat. It'll be a one free throw coming up here for Gaines, and he knocks it down. 57-38 now the score. So McAfee. Douglas is also back in the ball game, and he's going to step out of bounds. Turnover by McAfee. And we have talked about the turnovers all ball game. That has been the biggest story right now for this Haywood team. It's been about the turnovers. They have really not been able to get their grounding just because of all the turnovers they have had so far. A pull-up jumper by this young man, Glandon Glasper. And that's another reason why. He's got 28 of the team's 59 points. He is having an amazing game. Eric says it's amazing how quickly the weather can change. It absolutely is. Glasper with the rebound. Oh, what a move. <laughs> Goes out of bounds. Going to be a turnover there on Fayetteville. He just kind of smiles and walks away. He's having a great night or a great afternoon. 124 to play here in the third. It is amazing, Eric, how the weather changes. Right now, we're all wearing short sleeve shirts up here. By the end of the tournament, there's a steal. He's going to go in, possibly. Nope, lays it up and scores. So Haney with four points. Made those two points in transition. One minute left. 61 to 38 the score. Ball is on the floor. They're going to work it inside. And jump ball. You betcha. What a move by Jack Eric. And that will be a steal on him. He'll get the credit for the, the steal as the possession arrow is Fayetteville. So Fayetteville will play tomorrow, as will Haywood. Popper Bluff gets their crack at Fayetteville coming up on Wednesday. Well, that's going to be a fun game to watch Fayetteville. Popper Bluff, two very fast-paced teams. So Gaines quickly on the inbound, misses the shot, gets his own missed shot though. And this time it's going to be taken away instead by Tylen Chapman. So Haney picks up a foul. It'll be his first. Team foul number five. 30 seconds in counting here in the third quarter. It is a 61 to 38 ball game. Three-point basket is no good. It'll be rebounded here by Jack Eric, and we get a whistle and a travel called on Sawyer Keith. Fifteen point nine seconds. All that remains here in the third quarter of play. Chapman. Or make that, that's Douglas from the elbow, it's no good. Rebounded by Davis, and he could not get the shot to go down. At the end of three quarters, it's a 61-38 ball game. Looking at this quarter here by the Bulldogs out of Fayetteville. Actually outscoring Haywood at 21-13. How many games are we broadcasting? Eric, you'll be happy to know, my friend. We're going to be broadcasting every single game of the showdown right here live on Facebook and on YouTube. We are in it for the long haul. All those games you see right there on the screen, that's what we're going to be broadcasting. Big shout out to the Popper Bluff R1 School District for allowing this to happen, for making this happen. Our administrators here understand the need for us to 
do this showdown here live on video this year, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So Glasper is going to start here. He'll be in right now. 17 points. You look at this team out of Fayetteville, and they've got some real players that can score from any part of the floor. Anywhere. Eight minutes now on the board. And now we are back underway again. Haywood brings the ball down the court. It is 61 to 38 the score. Davis tries to rebound the missed shot. It's no good. And quickly on the other end, it's going to be a whistle here and a foul coming up against. It's going to be against Haywood. So Walker picks up a foul. That'll be his first. At the free throw line at four, the Fayetteville Bulldogs. Sawyer Keith makes the first one. He's got four points here in this ball game. Second one is on the way, and you bet you it knocks them both down. So both free throws are good at 63 to 38 now. And another whistle here and a foul coming up against Hay or make that against Fayetteville. It's going to be Jack Irk, his third personal foul, and that's team foul number five, or number six, rather. So now on the inbound, Snipe works it outside to Douglas. Douglas goes inside, and it is no good. Ball is batted around. It's picked up by the Bulldogs. 7-18 to play. There's a nice bucket by. Oh, he missed that time. That time, Glasper thought that was going in. Just could not fall down. Three-point basket by Snipe. It's off the mark. It's no good. And the rebound is picked up by Haney. Quickly down the floor now, Jack Eric. Big bucket for him. His first field goal of this contest. It's 65-38 the score. Another good assist by Haney on that one. Fayetteville with 20 assists in this ball game. It's going to be a foul on Jack Eric. That's his fourth. And we're going to see a sub coming in now. So four, well, one and one coming up now for the Tomcats. Our next broadcast, our next contest coming up here is going to feature Southside and Overton. Second one is up, and it is no good. So one out of two. Three-point basket by Jack Eric is up, and it is good. He's got five points here in this contest, 68 to 39. There's another steal, and it's going to be a push and a foul coming up on Fayetteville, I believe. So we get a line change coming in now for Fayetteville. So now they're going to bring in everybody. Desmond Gray is going to come in as well. Fayetteville in firm control of this contest. They have led from start to finish. Basket is no good by Walker, or make that by Rusher, rather. Five forty-seven in counting. It is a seventy to thirty-nine ball game now. As Desmond Gray. 
As the clock will continue to run, Pirtle picks up his second personal foul. Three-point opportunity by Desmond Gray is up, and it is good. 71-39 to now the score. As Fayetteville looks to go 1-0 in this early window contest. Another foul coming up here. This one's going to be against Fayetteville. Mason Simpson is going to be the foul this time. And for Simpson, that'll be number one on him. Under five minutes to play here in this first contest. Coming up next, you're going to feature Overton Southside. Southside is such a very good basketball program, as is Overton. First free throw is good. Second one is up, and it's also good. 71-41 to 41 to score. 30-point mercy rule now in effect. Works the ball outside to Simpson. We appreciate everybody tuning in on social media here this afternoon for this first contest. Good move and a block by Snipe, and he will pick up the personal foul. So, J.B. on Snipe. Landon Glasper here today so far. His day is done. He's got 28 points, one assist, two rebounds. He has had quite the ball game. We're going to see Bryland Sims coming in now for Graham Whitty. Seventy-two to forty-one now. Seventy-three to forty-one. The score. So tomorrow for Fayetteville, they are going to take on Overton tomorrow, beginning at five thirty p.m. So that means yes, you will be able to see that game exclusively here on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. 73-43 the score. Next contest is going to come up about 5.30. And there is a turnover by the Bulldogs. Boy, we're going to get a good look at Fayetteville coming up. There's a steal by Walker. Takes it out of midair on Sims. And now it's going to go right back. Well, I say it's going to go right back. Ball's on the floor somehow. Good move by Pirtle. And Pirtle is going to go to the line. That stops the clock. It's going to be on Sims. It'll be his first. It's 73 to 45. Or did they count that? They may not have counted that. Yeah, they did. Okay, now they do. I was going to say it, they acted for a second like they didn't count the basket, but they did. Had an injured player come off. Three-point play. It is good by Caden Pirtle. 2.45 now and counting. 73 to 46. It goes out of bounds. And another turnover by Fayetteville. And it will belong to Haywood. So Haywood... After losing this game here today, they are going to take on Poplar Bluff tomorrow. There's a big jumper by Caden Pirtle. 73 to 48. Another turnover that time by Rusher. A lot of young jerseys out there for this team out of Fayetteville. So we'll see this team tomorrow out of Haywood. Nice coaches, class act coaches all the way. Players the same. Another steal. Goes out of bounds here. We're coming up on the two-minute mark. 2.05 to be exact. So now we're sitting at two minutes now. Hayes nearly lost it. Somehow 
Gets it back. McAfee for three, and this one is off the mark. It's no good. But somehow the offensive rebound is there for Hayes. Banks it off the backboard. It's now down to a 23-point lead. Day one of the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. No good by Simpson. It goes out of bounds. Would have been a nice play had he been able to make that happen. 132 now. And counting. In this contest. What we will do as soon as this game is over. We'll get you to a couple of quick stats. And then we're going to go prepare for the next ball game. We'll put our camera on the floor so you can see the teams warming up. And then we'll come back with about five or so minutes before tip-off. Good move by Hayes. 73-52. Big shout-out to First Midwest Bank. They are the reason why we have the showdown. First Midwest Bank has been doing this showdown for 34 years. 35 if you include last year, even though we, we weren't able to have it last year. 38 seconds now and counting. And then, of course, the Popper Bluff R1 School District allowing us to not only broadcast the first day's games, but we're going to broadcast every game right here on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. A lot of folks right now tuning in on YouTube. We appreciate that as well. Getting ready for our second contest of the day here in just a few moments as Snipe could not get the shot to fall. Quickly down the floor now is Desmond Gray. He'll add two more. He's got five, and that should be the ball game. So first game is going to come to an end. McAfee is going to be blocked. And that will be the ball game as 75-52 is the final score. They may give us a little bit more than 15 minutes because of the fact that we are just a little bit ahead of time. Don't know that to be a fact. There is the final score on the board. Fayetteville, by the way, shot the ball very well, 50% overall. They were 11 of 23 from behind the arc, 8 out of 10 on the free throw line, 27 rebounds, 22 assists, 13 steals, 13 turnovers. Haywood shot the ball 48%. They were just 2 out of 11 from behind the arc, 10 of 15 on the free throw line. They had 25 rebounds, 8 assists, but 24 turnovers in that game. That was your biggest difference right there for Fayetteville. They were led by Landon Glasper, 28 points, one assist, two rebounds. And then from there, the scores fell like this. 17 by Gaines, had four rebounds, five by Sawyer Keith, five by Jack Eric. And then from there, four by Jaden Haney, two by Rex Rusher, five, by the way, by Mason Simpson. And then two by Graham Whitty, Five by Desmond Gray looking over at Haywood side. You had 12 points by Taquarius Douglas. And then from there, six, eight points by Tylan Chapman. Six points by Janarius Snipe. Four, or six points by Kevion Davis. And then seven by Jabrian Snipe. Five by Caden Pirtle. And two by Cordero Walker. That is your scoring breakdown for the first game of this 2021 Popper Bluff Showdown, 34th annual showdown. Stay with us. Do what you got to do and come right back. They put 19 minutes on the scoreboard. So with that being said, my partner and I, we're going to go down and we're going to regroup and get our rosters ready to go for the next ball game. We'll come back. Up next, it is Overton. It is Southside. This one is going to be a dandy. Southside, they're going to run and gun tonight, no doubt about it. Come back and join us. We'll be back in about 15 or so minutes. Game one in the books, Fayetteville getting a big win. They will now play tomorrow at 5.30. Coming up, it is game two between Overton. It is Southside. We'll be back. You're listening to the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.
All right, welcome back now to game number two of the Popper Bluff Showdown, 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. I'm Frankie Castile alongside tonight Tim Hicks, who is doing a phenomenal job on the cameras. This is, by the way, our first home games of this season. We have been on the road all since basketball season has started. And today is our very first time where we are actually at home, and it feels good to be at home for a change. All right, so first game of the day, you saw Fayetteville taking on Haywood, and Haywood going down in that contest. However, the way we are doing it this, this year because of COVID, we are going to crown a champion. And we'll explain the rules or the way this is going to work as we move throughout the broadcast. Coming up next, you're going to see Southside. There's my graphics. Southside will take on Overton. And I'm telling you, this one should be one of the – this is going to be a fun matchup. Let's put it to you like that. Southside, technically, they are the defending champions. They won it all back in 2019. We did not have a showdown last year, so obviously they could not defend their champion, their championship rather. So, with about two and a half minutes to go, we are gearing up now for what could be a really good matchup for Southside. Against Overton. Making sure right now that all of our rosters here, they match everything that we have been told. Sometimes that doesn't happen. I think in this case, we're going to be in good shape. So Overton coming in. We'll introduce you to all of the uh, players here for Overton. Coming up here as we make our way, get ready for this contest here this afternoon. Several players of Overton, according to the roster, were, were not able to make it here this afternoon. They've got a very limited amount of players, as a matter of fact. I believe they're only going to have eight players here today, and that is it. Let's go down courtside to Ken Hosler. lineups there for the Wolverines out of Overton. Now we're going to go down courtside for the starting lineups here for the south side coming in here. The south side Hawks. Christian 
So there you have it. Those are the starting lineups here for both squads here between Southside and Overton. It is game two of three today, and we are in for a good one. We are so happy that you are tuning in to us, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. Make sure and let us know where you're watching from. Share that video feed for us, and let's get ready for game two out of three tonight. Overton, Southside. Lee Jones, Pat Sarda are two officials. I didn't catch the thirds, the third official's name, but that's okay. Here we go. Ball goes in the air, and it's going to be controlled by Southside. They are going from right to left on your screen. A pull-up jumper is no good by Rico Sane. Here comes Frisson, and I think he stepped out of bounds. He did. Jerron Jones is going to turn the ball over right back to Southside. By the way, Southside, they are coming in the only undefeated team in this tournament right now. They are 8-0. They are a two-time showdown champion so far in this tournament. What a block going out of bounds by Isaiah Regular. Isaiah Regular, by the way, a 6'8 senior. On the inbound, shot is up and no good by Christian Mitchell. Quickly down the floor, and Isaiah Regular thought he had a dunk, and he could not get it to go. I told you it's going to be really fast all the way through, and that's what we're seeing so far. Southside, by the way, won this tournament back in 2019. It did not have a showdown last year. They are 8-0. You look at Overton. They're being coached by Shelby Rose in his third season as coach. Oh, that's that three-point basket in and out by Rico Sane. Rico Slane rebounded by Frisson. Another shot taken. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Southside, and that's going to stay with Overton. So no score here in the early going. Isaiah Regular, not only can he rebound, he can also shoot the three-point ball as well. Oh, a near dunk there by number two, Jones. He could not convert. And there's a wide open three-point basket by Isaiah Regular. And now it is a 3-0 ball game for Overton over Southside. We had the uh, banquet earlier today. Coach Fuller of Southside, I thought his message was so on point. First shot no good by Cole, but he fights for the rebound. It gets it back up and scores. And he said, quite frankly, his message to this team is he's trying to teach these boys, as he called them, to be better men. A three-point basket by Jordan Frisson. Said he was, Frison rather, said he was trying to make them into better men when they graduate high school. He, he was such a, a very well-spoken coach earlier today, Coach Fuller of Southside. And you could tell that he meant every word he was saying today really has a, a very good understanding of what of what this team is and, and he's just a really good guy to talk to all in all wolverine foul regular on the foul quick steal and just like that here bryson a quick bucket in transition eight to two now south side trails overton here in the early going south side coming in eight and zero. Oh. Shot is no good by Cole. It's rebounded quickly by Fryson. Eric Wall says he is ready. Wallace says he is ready for game two. Three-point basket is no good by Fryson. It's picked up by Mitchell on the other end. Shot is no good by Rico Slane. We get a jump ball. It's going to go in the direction of Overton. And we may get a timeout here. We're going to get a timeout right off the bat. It'll be a 30-second timeout here taken by Southside. Coach Fuller not happy with what he's seeing early on. and He'll change a few things. Appreciate you tuning in on social media, whether it's on Facebook or our YouTube channel. 
Coming up in our third game of the night, we will switch over. We'll do radio and YouTube and Facebook coming up for game three, and that'll be Popper Bluff taking on the Four City Mustangs in game three of the night. We want to say a big thank you to our corporate sponsor for this tournament, First Midwest Bank. First Midwest Bank does a phenomenal job with everything they do. And they are our, our true hometown heroes at First Midwest Bank. So now following the timeout here, Grady comes in. Grady is going to be blocked by Mitchell. So there's a block, and now Southside is going to have it once again taken away, and there's the one-handed jam by Isaiah Regular. He is just unstoppable. It is a 10-2 run to begin this contest. Isaiah Regular picks up his second personal foul. So now we're going to see some subs coming in. Bryson Baker now is going to come in for Robert Liggins on the other end. Isaiah Regular now will come out of the ball game for right now. And that is a big loss with Regular on the bench right now with two personal fouls. Mitchell trying to find somebody open, trying to get something going inside. That's a way to start. Rico Slane could not finish at the rim. Fryson is going to pick up the rebound. So Grady and Javion Jones, by the way, checks in. We're going to get a whistle and a foul coming up. It'll be on at JV on Jones. Team foul number three now. Three nothing in favor of the Wolverines when it comes to fouls. Baker near the midcourt area. We're going to get a foul on Grady now. DeBrico Grady is going to be called for a foul. Team foul number four. And we're going to see for the Wolverines, or I should say, we're going to see for the Hawks, we'll see Jeremiah Smith inbound it instead of Rico Slane. Slane that did get a touch, and now back over to Smith. 10-2 in favor of the Wolverines, Overton. This is the game two of the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. Good move inside by Jalen Cole, and it's going to fall 10-4 now. And now Southside is starting to pick up the tempo just a little bit. Southside coming in. They're 8-0 as of right now, but they are down by six points. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul on Bryson Baker. Baker put just a little bit too much contact in that one. Southside, or make that Overton now, going to inbound. 3-11 to play here in the first quarter of play. Fouls look like this. Overton with four. Southside with just one. Good move inside to Jones, and Jones lays it up and scores his first bucket of the game. It is now 12-4. You look at Southside, they've got the ball right now, just shooting 22% overall. They are two out of nine. Two turnovers. The Wolverines, by the way, they are shooting 50% right now. And there's a steal by Jones in midair. There's the one-handed jam by Jones. Jerron Jones, his first bucket. Rico Slane, the other direction, is no good. And it's rebounded by Fryson. It goes back to the overall percentages right now. The Wolverines are shooting a whopping 55%. That is the difference right now. As a foul is going to be called, I believe it's on Jeremiah Smith. It'll be his first team foul number two. It's going to put J.B. on Jones on the free throw line. He's already got two points in just 90 seconds of work. Make it three points now. And we're going to see for Southside, Rico Slane is going to come out. Also coming out is Christian Mitchell. Taking 
Second free throw is on the way. It is up and it is good. So 16, 16 to four now is this current score. Shot is up, it's no good. By Anderson. And here comes the Wolverines up 16 to four. Long three pointer, this one is up and good by Terrell Freeman. Freeman with a big jumper. 19 to four, Southside right now is down by 15 points. And we get a whistle, travel called. This one gonna be on Jalen Cole. Took one too many steps. And we're gonna see Dante Lacey coming in the ball game now. He'll check in for Bryson Baker. Overton only playing with eight players here tonight. They've only got eight players here total. And right now there's a there's a missed opportunity there by Jordan Fryson. He stepped out of bounds. Baker is going to come back in. Baker back in for Dante Lacey. 119 to play here in the first quarter. 19 to 4 in favor of Overton. We'll see Popper Bluff coming up in the next game as Cameron Anderson knocks it in off the backboard. 19 to 6 now is a 13 point lead. The biggest story right now for Overton is Isaiah Regular, six foot eight senior. There's a steal by Anderson. Baker now gets it, gonna be blocked. Always oh, stepped out of bounds. He did. It's gonna go out of bounds. And it will belong right back to the Wolverines. Three-point basket by Freeman. This one is going to be off the mark. It's going to touch the back of the scoreboard there on the upper part of the goal. It'll be considered out of bounds, and now it's going to go right back to Southside. 19-6. Is the score. Baker now. He's going to lose it in. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession is going to stay. It's going to be Wolverine basketball. So... Yeah, correction. I, I didn't think it was going to be Wolverine basketball. I, the possession arrow still favors at Southside, and now the possession arrow will go to the, the Wolverines. 21 seconds here in the first quarter of play. It is 19 to 6. Southside shooting 23%. Overton shooting 54%. And they're going to play for one shot. Five seconds and counting. Cole steps near the elbow. He's going to have to get a shot off. He does. It's not going to. It's not going to go. At the end of one quarter, it is a 19 to six lead by the Wolverines of Overton. While we have a few moments, let's throw out some love to our sponsors here for this year's Popper Bluff Showdown. A big shout out to the R1 School District in Popper Bluff for allowing us to stream all these games exclusively on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. First Midwest Bank, also brought to you by Super 8 Motel, Comfort Inn, Academy Sports and Outdoors, Holiday Inn, Hampton Inn, Drury Inn, Robert Rowland Dentistry. Also being brought to you by Briggs & Stratton, Donut House, and Godfather's Pizza. As we begin the second quarter of play, the Wolverines lead at 19 to 6. Eight minutes to go here as we get ready for quarter number two. 
Tomorrow morning, we are going to have the annual three-point contest and slam dunk contest tomorrow. We will do that for the first time ever on video. Going to be excited there to be able to get that done. 19-6 to is the score as Overton now. As the inbound, Jordan Fryson. Fryson kicks it inside. Isaiah Regular back on the floor. Shot is going to be a little bit short by Freeman. Rebounded by Jeremiah Smith. Good move inside. Smith hands it off again, and two points is up, and it is good for Cameron Anderson. 19 to 8 now. Southside. Oh, what a move by Isaiah Regular. Freeman off the backboard. It is good. Boy, when Isaiah Regular comes in, he's just a complete difference maker. And just like that, Jones going to miss the shot on the other end. One-on-one, -on -one. no good, but the putback is good this time by Jordan Fryson. 23-8, long three-pointer. This one is up and good by Jalen Cole. It is now 23-11. I told you it was going to be a it was going to be fast. It is very fast. Thank you. We got the correction. The roster that we were given, it said slain. It's actually Rico Sane. We appreciate those tuning in on Facebook, letting us know. Going to get a whistle. Foul on the floor. And we're going to get several subs coming in now for both teams. Terrell Freeman. Is going to be called for the personal foul. On the inbound, it is up and it is good by Cameron Anderson. Now it's 23 13 to score now. Rico Sane is back in the ball game. The running floater is up and no good by Jones. Offensive rebound, though, comes right back to Overton. Isaiah, Isaiah Regular could not get the jam to fall. L little bit of contact. And the whistle, the jump ball rather, is going to go in favor of Southside. So Southside quickly down the floor. Robert Liggins is back in the ball game. So for Southside, they've got some momentum right now. They're down by 10 points. Isaiah Regular. He is doing it all, as is Jordan Fryson right now. Grady back in the ball game for Overton as well. Cole. Oh, it's going to be three seconds in the lane at turnover. So for Southside, Collier Bryson checks in for Robert Liggins. Grady works it around, top of the key to Fryson. Fryson cannot get the shot to go all the way down. The other way, it's going to go out of bounds. Last touched, I believe, by Overton. Quickly inside now. Cameron Anderson gives it to Rico Sane, and Sane, his first bucket of the ball game. Now it's an eight-point lead. Southside starting to make their comeback now. You knew they were going to at some point. Very good. They're a very good, well-coached team. Very quick, very disciplined. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by, by Southside. Day two game, or I should say day one, game two of the Popper Bluff Showdown. 
Features Southside, Overton, Popper Bluff coming up next. They will take on Forest City, Arkansas. In our third and final game of the night, 23-15 is the score. Boy, Southside has really taken shape of this quarter. Long three-pointer. This one is in and out. No good. I thought Bailey had the shot to go. Cole, a little bit out of characteristic, but he's still able to find Anderson. Anderson with two more points. He's got eight points. Three players by Southside with all 17 points. Cameron Anderson's got eight points. Jalen Cole's got seven. Rico Sane has got two. You look at what they have done so far this quarter. You look at Overton. They outscored 19 to 6 in the first quarter. And Southside has returned the favor so far. They have outscored 11 to 4 in the second quarter. It is now a six-point lead for the Wolverines out of Overton. Coming up in our next contest will feature Popper Bluff and Forest City. Timeout called, this one by Overton. Each team now with four timeouts remaining here in the ball game. Both teams have three 30s and one 60 remaining. So now pushing the tempo now is Grady. Oh, good job there by Dante Lacey on the steal. Lacey goes up and scores two points in transition. And now, don't look now, it's a four-point game. And there's another turnover as Jones, or make that Cole rather, took it away from Overton. He'll get the foul. And now Cole is going to go to the free throw line as Fryson picks up his first. Team foul number six, south side, they've got two. So now Jalen Cole with seven points. He has not been at the line so far today. He's going now. And we're going to see coming in for Overton. We're going to see Jordan Jackson coming in. He'll come in for Cordell Bailey. 23-20 the score. Make that 23-21. So now with the blink of an eye, Southside right back in the game. You love ball games like this where it's close. I'm sure for the Southside fans, they want it to be the other way. Good running floater there by Jordan Jackson. 25-21 now. We love the uh, close ball games. 3.41 to play. Good move by Dante Lacey to draw contact. It's going to be a foul on Jordan Jackson, I believe. Should be a one and one coming up now for Southside. Southside already two of two on the night from the free throw line. It's going to be Dante Lacey this time to take the free throws to still cut into the lead. A lot of folks tuning in right now on YouTube and on so and on Facebook. We appreciate that as well. First one is up and good at 25-22 the score. Second one is on the way. It is up and it is good by Dante Lacey. It's back to a two-point game again. 25-23 the score. It goes out of bounds. Be last touched by Southside. So Overton is going to retain possession. Three-point basket is no good. It's going to be taken by the Hawks. Bryson long rebound. So now Cole going to go underneath. Goes baseline. Oh, it rims out on him. It's no good. But the offensive board is being fought for, and it's going to be last touched, I believe, by the Hawks out of Southside. 3.05 to play, first half. Two-point ball game. 
25-23. So now quickly down the floor is the Wolverines. At one point, they led 19-6 at one point. We're going to see Bryson Baker back in the ballgame now. Three-point basket is no good by Jones. Quickly now, down the floor are the Hawks. Three-point basket by Baker. It falls. And now it is a 26-25 score. Right now, the Wolverines don't have an answer for this Southside team who has really picked up the pace. Fryson going in the middle. His shot is not going to fall. So now on the other end, another one by Baker. This one for three. It's off the mark. It's no good. We're going to get a whistle here and a foul coming up as Baker lit him up a moment ago. It's going to be on Anderson. Anderson's going to be called for the foul. 2.14 to play here before half. 26-25 the score. And Grady is going to turn it over right back to Southside. So now to 155. Nearly a turnover there by the Southside Hawks. 26-25, 154 to play. I've got John Scott right beside me. I'm trying to figure out what he's doing. Is he going to put the headset on and, and get on the air with us? Or what are we doing there, John? Frankie, I was just listening to your wonderful call of this game and thinking to myself, how do you never lose your voice? i got to tell you, man. I, I, I seriously got to tell you. If we see another big bucket that time, Rico Sane. I tell you what, what a comeback we have seen by Southside. They were down 19-6 to at one point. Now they're up 28-25. Southside undefeated this season so far. Coach Fuller has his team ready to go. I was going to tell you, we have we have such another turnover. Rico saying again, missing the bucket that time. Man, my goodness, this team out of Southside, they are the real deal for sure. Coming in now is Peterson. He will come in for Cole. Also coming in now is Christian Mitchell. He'll come in for Anderson. What I like about this team out of Overton, what you've got to appreciate is they've only got eight players and Cordell Bailey from the baseball pass knocking it in. 28-27 to score. Huge run for the Hawks is right, Eric. 28-27. What's amazing is, I was going to tell you, there's such a big presence right now watching us on Facebook and on YouTube, John. I'm very excited for the out-of-state fans who could not make the trip that are able to watch these games live in its entirety. Absolutely. It's wonderful for families, friends, teachers, whoever wants to watch, people who can't make the trip for whatever reason, get a taste of it, see how nice it is. Maybe next year they'll be able to come down, Absolutely. catch it live, or come back later in the week. We'd yeah, love we're to have you. We're going to be here all week. Good job there by the Wolverines. Missing the shot, though, as Jones rebounded quickly by Peterson. And here comes the Hawks on the other side. Jeremiah Smith could not get that three ball to go down. And we're going to see Dante Lacey coming right back in the game now for Baker. 24.6 seconds now here in the first half. 28-27 the score. Coming up in game three, Popper Bluff. There's a good job there by Lacey, who nearly had the steal. Isaiah Regular, he's got seven points, and now the Wolverines lead by one. Coming up on seven seconds now. Lacey kicks it outside. Jumper is no good. Somehow fought for by the, by the Hawks. And just like that, the Hawks... Still trail by one. It is 29 to 28. The score. 
And we're going to keep it here for just a few minutes, and we're going to talk to my good friend, John Scott. And first off, i got to tell you, a lot different than football. I love our view right here where we are in this gym. We are center stage, courts. I mean, we're not courtside. We're a, a, a level up, but you can see everything. And I love this view right here where we're at. Absolutely. It looks like the right side of the gym, the correct side of the gym to be on, and it is a good view of a wonderful gym, as I, I might add. Uh, a relatively new facility. It's getting some character and uh, seeing some good folks here. We got a nice view of the scoreboard where we are. And we can see, you know, this tournament has really been nice uh, over the years since it started in 1987. Absolutely. And uh, we've had some great players come through here. We've had a lot of Division One coaches here recruiting players. A lot of people coming from all around. Man, it's been really nice. It's good to see people back in the audience, back in the gym. Seeing some great talent from all over, various states and all over the place. And uh, this is really shaping up to be a good game. It really is. I'm so excited that we're able to uh, to be here to uh, cover this tournament in its entirety. I'm just amazed by all the folks watching on YouTube, watching on Facebook. If you look up here where we're at, and before this week is over, I'll have Tim do it. I've got my, my green drink. I've got my, it looks like grandpa's old cough medicine here but it's actually ginger shots because i've never done nine games in a row like we're going to be doing so i got to make sure that by wednesday i'm not completely hoarse absolutely you know i thought i could smell that ginger you know if people haven't had a ginger shot it uh tastes to me like tabasco like better tasting tabasco it's uh and it'll certainly get you going it burns the old throat oh he's got me on camera now we appreciate that tim <laughs> I wasn't ready for that uh, face shot there. I'm not but, real sure what's in that bottle, though, to be honest with you. It's, oh, he, he got me. unmarked. See, I'm about 40 <laughs> seconds behind, so he can he got me taking a drink. I appreciate that, Tim. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're having a blast here tonight. But this showdown is so incredible because, you know, you, you talk about everybody who's involved. And, and I'm not sure if you were there today at the banquet, but just hearing the coaches, all of them coming out here, and they're just so appreciative of being here that we were able to still put this on. We know we had two teams drop. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to even have this tournament, but quite frankly, the administration from Popper Bluff R1, including all of our, our schools that are here this weekend or this week, they all wanted to be here, and we're just so sick and tired of talking about COVID. I know I'm sick and tired of it, but somehow we were able to band together do it safely, and put on an amazing tournament over the next three days. Yes, it's really nice to see people here. And I know people really want to be here. And, yeah, it got a little scary there for a minute. We had one team was unable to play, and we, we were going to play actually our JV team. Uh, was going to take that team's place, and we had another team fall out. So we were able to change the format just a little bit and do more like a shootout, I guess you would call it, and, uh, and let the teams go ahead and play because we know that the kids want to play. It's good for the kids. They're off school. As my old English teacher used to say, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Workshop, So it's good for these kids to uh, have something to focus on as they get uh, closer to and turn their corner on the season and start playing more of their local opponents, their conference games, district games, and that. Another big thing about this tournament, if you look to our screen, you can see all these amazing sponsors of this tournament, including First Midwest Bank. Thank you so much, Willie. And it's just amazing. You see all these great sponsors. This tournament, it means so much to the community. And I know last year not having it was just devastating for a lot of our businesses. You look at this list now, and our hotels are full this weekend because of teams coming in. Our restaurants are going to benefit from this. Having a showdown in Popper Bluff, it benefits so many people other than just folks like you and I. Absolutely it does. And we can't say enough about First Midwest Bank. Really, this tournament was born uh, from Dr. Jerry McLean, who was the owner of First Midwest Bank at the time, uh, the benefactor of this tournament, who had a vision to start this and really showcase some top-notch quality basketball and have teams come in from all over with great players uh, for the community. It was his vision, and he, he put up a lot of the financial support to do that. And uh, all these years later, you know, going on 40 years, I guess, uh, They've been in the forefront of that, and they're, they're a great bunch of people. They, they love basketball. They love our local community, and they're involved in other communities throughout the state, whether it be Columbia, Springfield, all around. 
and uh, and we couldn't do this without them and we really appreciate that opportunity to continue this tradition that uh, some guys you know back in the 80s had a vision and wanted to do it and here we are absolutely you know by the way i gotta give a big shout out real quick to my uh, good friend bruce beggs he is tuning in in cape Girardeau. he works in our corporate offices in cape I'm so happy to be where I am tonight, Bruce. I'm in the gym where I belong. I'm hoping you're having a great Christmas week and New Year's week. Here we go with about four minutes to go here before we get back to second half action. What have you liked so far about these two teams looking at Overton first off? They got off to a great start. You look at Southside, they're 8-0 for a reason. They never gave up. And now you look at the score, they're down by one point. Absolutely. It's a great game. You know, like you say, Southside came out a little bit flat, a little bit slow there at the beginning, and he got kind of out of hand on them, 19-6 to or whatever it was. And then they sure turned it on, man. And so these teams look to be evenly matched, and they're a quick fundamental team playing very well. And it should be a really good second half uh, with these guys. It, it, right now, I mean, it's just neck and neck every other possession. No, it really is. And it's it, it, something tells me that this next half is going to be the exact same way. You look at what they've been doing so far. Southside shooting 35% overall. They're 2 of 5 from behind the arc. Just 4 of 4 on the free throw line. Only six turnovers. You look at Overton. They are coming in shooting 41% overall. 3 of 10 from behind the arc. And 2 of 2 on the free throw line. They've got eight first half assists, also seven turnovers so far in this ball game. You look at the overall amount of points so far. Jalen Cole right now, he leads the way with nine points. Cameron Anderson, he's got eight points. And then from there, Rico Sane and Dante Lacey each with four points. Bryson Baker, he's got three points so far. That's your scoring by the Hawks of Southside. Looking at Overton, they've had some great contributions. Jordan Fryson, Isaiah Regular, each with seven points so far. Five points by Terrell Freeman, four by Javion Jones. You've got two points each by Jaron, J Jaharn Jones, also by Jordan Jackson and Cordell Bailey. That is your scoring so far in the first half. And with three minutes left before halftime, I anticipate that this next half is going to be the exact same back and forth, a very fast-paced action. And can you believe that we're sitting here it's December 27th. Hard to believe that tonight, when it's all said and done, even though it's a tournament, it's going to be our first home game this season for Popper Bluff. And already quite a few fans making their way out to the high school. I encourage you, if you're in Popper Bluff, you want to see a great basketball game, come out and support the Mules coming up at 7 p.m. They will take on Forest City. Should be a good ball game. Absolutely should be. It's a great opportunity for folks to come out and see the team. We got some new players. We got some kids growing up, coming up. Um, very balanced team. Uh, plays well together. And I think it's an exciting team to watch. And uh, I would definitely encourage anybody around, you know, it's pretty cheap entertainment. Come watch your Mules play some basketball. It really is. And I was told, something. somebody told me that if we had another team drop, they were going to have the school board make up a team, and you were going to be the captain of that team. That's what I was told in well, confidence. I, I feel like the class of 90 would uh, class last of about 90. Uh, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. <laughs> in pregame warm-ups before we all had to take a break and perhaps call an ambulance to get down here. You know, we, we, we're going to have to bring some of that back. Uh, I know during football season, for those that were tuning in during football season, we had an absolute blast talking about calling out different classes and whatnot. We'll do that again this week for sure. But I'm excited to have you here. So how long are you going to hang out with us? I can hang out. I'm pretty good this week. I You're think. pretty good? Yeah, I like pretty to good. hear that. I like to hear that. Barring any unforeseen disaster and if I don't lose my voice, which is a the thing's possibility. Well, that's why I've got this uh, this green drink. And by yep. the way, this uh, detox drink, I call it, I made this myself. My wife bought me a juicer back in November, and I got on YouTube and started learning how to ing you know mix all the ingredients. So now I've got my own ginger, my own kale, my own lemon. I do it myself. It's pretty cool. Well, you may need to bring a gallon jug of that stuff tomorrow. I'm telling Maybe you we'll what. Maybe we'll sit up here and sip it all afternoon and see what happens. Well, that's what I'll be doing for <laughs> sure. I guarantee it. So, so now we're going to get back to life live action here. Welcome back to the day one of the second game of the Popper Bluff Showdown, 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. I'm Frankie Castile alongside John Scott, and he's going to help us out here, be with us on the mic. We always enjoy having him in, but how did you get a big stool and I got a one of those small seats. Well, I was wondering about that. I, I don't know. I just now I, uh, realized how high you are <laughs> off the ground, and here I am sitting on the ground. 
That way I can see over. I'm old, Frank. I You're old. I got you. All right. So it looks like we're going to have the uh, same starting five to begin this half as what we had last game or last last half. So here we go now as we get back to live action. It'll be the Wolverines that they will inbound. They're going to go from right to left on your TV screens or if you're watching us on your phones or whatever. So now there is a nice jumper by regular. It's no good. It'll be rebounded here by Mitchell of Southside at 29 to 28. The biggest difference is for me, John, is we're so used to calling radio games. When you have a game like this on television or on Facebook, however you want to classify it, I don't have to say every little detail because folks can see it for themselves at home, and that's kind of a cool feeling. Well, yes, you have to be careful. You can't embellish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can't embellish either. Like, like you know, with Rico Sane missing that shot, I can't. You know, if I if I do say something wrong, believe me, my our, our fans will let us know on social media real quick that I was wrong. Absolutely. Just like the the roster was wrong on Rico Sane, it had it listed as something else, and I was told pretty quick that is not correct. So quickly down the floor now. Look at Southside here. They are really hustling and bustling down by one. You've got Cole going into the rim. It's no good, but the Mitchell with a quick putback. His first bucket of the game. And now once again, Southside leads by one point. It is now 30-29. Did you have a good Christmas, by the way, John? I did indeed, Frankie. I had a good time. How about good. you? I, I, I did, and... I knew Christmas was over because we're talking about the showdown, and we're just happy to be here. Yes, indeed we are. We made it <laughs> made it through. We did. Deep, deep fried a turkey, which is a lot of fun. I deep always like fried a turkey. Yes, although oil, the peanut oil is getting so expensive, <laughs> I've recycled that. <laughs> I said, I'm going to recycle that oil this time. I don't blame you a bit. Are you going to participate tomorrow in the uh, three-point slam dunk contest? Are you going to get out there and show them your moves? I'm going to try to at least show up for some of that, but I do have to work occasionally, so I may not make it in for that, depending gotcha. on if I get freed up. Jones with the big three-point shot. We're going back and forth now. It's a two-point lead by Overton. And we're going to get a whistle here, and it's going to go against Southside. I believe it's going to be on Mitchell. If it's on Mitchell, it's number two. It is. It'll be a foul away from the ball. Interesting call. I'll just leave it at that. 32-30 the score. Coming up on the six-minute mark here in the third. We're going to go back and forth. And I'm okay with that. Long three-pointer is up and no good. Sane with a rebound. Rico saying, oh, he's going to be blocked going the other way. I believe Grady was the one that got that block on. Isaiah Regular, his second one of this game, 34-30. He yeah. is just a, a phenomenal athlete. I, I, I saw that kid warming up, and I thought, thank the good Lord it's not 1990. <laughs> Boy, has a two-handed jam. I'm telling you, this kid is something to watch. You know what I've noticed here this year in, in this in this tournament thus far is typically when you, when you have the showdowns, we see a turnover there on the floor. Cole goes to the floor, and we're going to get a jump ball. It's going to be Southside's ball. We're going to see Baker coming back in. He will check in for Robert Liggins. What I was going to say is I don't see a lot of 6'10", six, 6'10", six guys out there this year. No, Normally yeah. we have a few of those. That is odd. You know, usually there's a couple of really tall kids. and There's a steal. It. But this Jordan Fryson kid, he'll play on my team any time of the week. Another big steal, a turnover. He turns it into a bucket on the other end. He's got nine. 36-30 now the score. Back to a six-point lead. The Hawks led by a couple of points. Three-point basket is up and good by Jalen Cole. He's got 12. 36-33. This is the kind of game I anticipated going kind of back and forth. And that's what we're doing right now. Three-point basket again by Jones. He's got eight points. Well played basketball, both these teams. Another steal. Jones counted and the foul. You know, Southside, Jackson, Tennessee is really a nice community over there. Union University there. Um, it's halfway to my in-laws. So nice. we would stop there a lot of times and eat at the Cracker Barrel or wherever. 
And uh, they've got a you know nice small area and and you know college town feel to it. Cameron Anderson back in, and it's going to be a lane violation, so it wouldn't have counted anyway, even if it would have went down. So Liggins, it looks like, is going to check back in, or he may have. Nope. It's going to be Dante Lacey instead. Four and a half minutes to play here in the third. It's 41-33 now, the score. Oh, what a move by Rico Sane to get free. 41 to 35 now the score. So now Overton going the other direction with Grady. Grady a long pass to Fryman. Or Fryson rather. Fryson cannot get the shot to fall, but Freeman, he gets the offensive rebound, puts it back in and scores. He's got seven. It's back to an eight-point lead. Dante Lacey works it outside to Jalen Cole and we're going to get a turnover on Cole 3.53 to play here in this third quarter we've got the scoreboard going in the side, the side there doing your game cast which is I'm doing the game cast has to be more difficult when you're learning the players you probably already learned that last week actually I did a lot of them I actually started studying them as soon as I oh what a Ooh. move a near dunk by Jones and Lacey drives the other way and he gets fouled for the most part, I know most of them. Some of them I don't know. They did change a few numbers on me. But for the most part, that's how I spent my entire Christmas break was learning the numbers. <laughs> my wife and I would do a little game where she would challenge me a lot on these names. A Christmas miracle, a Hallmark movie. And it was not a Hallmark movie at my house, I can promise you that. Did you get your chicken and dumplings? I did get my chicken and dumplings, and they were amazing. Lacey, big free throw, five points on the game. She got up at 6 a.m. and started them, and we ate about noon. Nice. She worked all morning on nice. it. Nice. As a matter of fact, I still have some left over. That'll be tomorrow's lunch. 43-37 now. Long three-pointer in the corner. It's no good. Could be over the back. It's going to be over the back on Terrell Freeman, but that goes to show you just how high he got up on that one. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, man, that kid can fly. He got up. You know, when you're doing games like this, when you're you're doing the games, and I'm just so happy to put these games on and be able to call them. It, I don't, I'm not worried about who wins. I mean, I'm just, I'm just excited to watch some good competition, and we're seeing that so far today. To see, to see good teams playing good basketball, and you know what, these kids all seem like good kids. They do. They're being uh, showing sportsmanship. They seem respectful. They're playing their games. Their coaches uh, look like good coaches. The teams are well-disciplined. It's just nice to see a good basketball program for both these schools here. Had a couple of the players even come up to us during the banquet as Anderson misses the first free throw and said, you know, how appreciative they are that they can watch their, you know, their folks back home can watch these games and not have to worry about, you know, having to get out and do whatever. Spending money, traveling, gas is expensive. Plus, in these times, it's hard to travel if you have grandparents or it is. Know, people who don't need to be out and around wintertime. You never know about the weather, although now it's so hot. Yeah, I was going to say there's a good steal by Jeremiah Smith, but the Wolverines take it right back. So Grady now gets it back outside to Jordan Fryson. Fryson, boy, he has been something to watch here today as well. Nine points so far in this contest. Oh, good job there. Good steal by Cole as Fryson tried. That was a very tight window there. And the Hawks are going to come away with two points after Anderson. He's got ten points now. Don't look. It's a four-point lead. Southside has trailed the majority of this game, but they are still fighting tooth and nail. And we're going to get Rico Sane is going to pick up a foul, his first and I gotta tell you, I, I can't see where they're tuning in, but if you look, we've got a huge following right now on YouTube. I would imagine we're getting a lot of folks out of Jackson, Tennessee tuning in right now. As Grady misses that shot, it's gonna go right back to Southside. Lacey on the rebound, three point basket. Oh, it's in and out, no good. And it's gonna be saved. Oh, Rico couldn't hang on to it. That would have been two points easily. 
you know, these teams are really, they don't have a lot of turnovers. They're mm -hmm. not many fouls. They play pretty uh, controlled basketball. Absolutely. We're going to get a timeout here, a 30-second timeout. So with that being said, let's let's say thank you again to the, you know, Tim, if you don't mind, we'll put that uh, sponsors back up on the screen there. I, I want everybody at home or wherever they're watching to see these amazing sponsors like Kissinger and Kirkman, C.E. Norton Construction and Plumbing Incorporation, Dairy Queen, Popper Bluff Regional Medical Center, Tin Box Cost, Tin Box Cost Plus. Also brought to you by Walmart, Pepsi, Buffalo Wild Wings, Coca-Cola, Las Margaritas, Mayas, also Fairfield Inn, Briggs and Stratton, Robert Roland Dentistry. You've got Godfather's Pizza and the Donut House. Just a prime example of all of our sponsors here this year bringing us our 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. So now following the timeout, Overton set to inbound. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by the Hawks. Something else, Frankie, your listeners should uh, or viewers should know is if you really want to get a good hot dog, come on down to Papa Bluff uh, to our gym. We have, I would argue, and I believe is true, the best hot dogs uh, in any gym that I've been in. <clears throat> well priced and well done. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get to that coming up here a little bit later on. Who, which school has the best hot dogs? Oh, what a move by Cole as he fights his way in the paint, draws the foul. Uh, let's see. Brent, our YouTube link is River Radio PB. River Radio, two words, River Radio, then space PB. Brent, and that will take you right to our link on Facebook. As Grady picks up his third personal foul, and Jalen Cole now with 15 points. And it's a one possession or one a one point game until right there until Jones he's got 12. Now it's back to a three point game. We're watching uh, two different sites here, YouTube and Facebook. As Cole misses the jumper in the wing, Grady picks up a nice rebound. 45-42 the score. And now Freeman, he's got 7 points, gets it back to Grady. Grady hasn't scored yet, but man, he has been all over the floor. And I got to tell you, John, people that's coming out right now, what a move by Terrell Freeman. That's a big shot by him. He's got 10 in the ball game. Smooth Rico shot. Rico saying, what a move. He, oh, could not finish. Should have just dunked that one. Of course, he's been running up and down the floor for a while. Ooh, yeah, there it is. There's, there's a flush. So Isaiah regular now, and quickly it's back up to eight points. Did not take very long. Well, he can play that Isaiah regular. Gets yes, up. he can. It'd be nice to be able to do that. He's got 11 points, six foot eight. That's what I've got. Is he six foot eight? We're going to get a timeout called by Southside. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. You know, I was going to tell you, while we have just a moment, I look out here and I see all these fans coming in, and this is incredible. We've got two out-of-state teams playing right now in the showdown. I know I know, Bluff is coming up next. Most of these fans have been here for the entirety of this ball game, and they're getting a real treat right now, whether you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook or you're here in the crowd. This is what our showdown should be about. Absolutely. It's 45 minutes from our, from our home game, and people are showing up. You know, I got here really right maybe the first quarter of the first game and there were several people in the audience already uh, wanting to see some good basketball and it's folks that have been coming to this tournament for years seeing a lot of great players come through here absolutely 31 and a half seconds left to play here in this third quarter and now following the inbound, what a backdoor pass to Cameron Anderson. Dante Lacey, my goodness, what a pass. It was a globetrotter pass. That was something that I was not anticipating. 50-44 to 44 now the score. Going the other direction, Jones had it lost. He was trying, I think he was, well, there was another turnover by Southside. And now, oh, what a no-look pass. Ooh. That's goaltending, but what a pass by Isaiah Regular. Absolutely. He could have he could have taken that, been a little greedy with it, but he was, and it was very nice. Very unselfish play. Unselfish play, exactly. Oh, what a steal by Fryson. 
And that's how this quarter is going to come to an end. It's a 10-point lead right now by the Wolverines. I don't think anybody was expecting that to happen so quickly. That team's explosive. They put up a lot of points really quickly in that defense. They turned it up there toward the end of that quarter. I would anticipate the fourth quarter they'll come out the same way, but yeah, they can hang some points pretty fast. Absolutely. It is now a 10-point lead, 54 to 44 the score. 54-44 coming up. And of course, we'll take a quick timeout. 30-second break. We're right back. You're listening to the 34th Annual Popper Bluff Showdown on at the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. All right, so here we go as we get ready for the fourth and final quarter, Overton. They are going to inbound the ball to begin with. Isaiah Regular still on the floor right now. He is a big difference maker when he is on the floor. And now you look at Southside, down by 10 points. Good rebound there by Rico Sane. And that's one thing about Southside. They are not going to mess around. A good shot by Cameron Anderson. He's got 14 points for Southside. It's back to a six-point or eight-point game. Dante Lacey doing all he can defensively. What a move by Dante Lacey. And now Cole... Did he get the timeout? He did. They're going to say the timeout was called before before he hit the out-of-bounds line. At 54 now to 46 is the score. So while I've got you on the air with me, let's talk a little bit about the R1 school district. And there's been a lot of concerns about the new variant going around and I'm just glad right now that the schools are, are down because of Christmas break, and hopefully by the time we get to January, some of this stuff may go away on its own, maybe. Fingers crossed. Yes, I, I feel like if you look around the world, this, this, this Omicron variant sort of blows up and then hopefully burns out relatively quickly without a whole lot of problems. And we're seeing it blow up here uh, locally but not as bad as it was before. The hospitals right. aren't as crowded. I would just encourage everyone to certainly be careful and to, uh, you know, be aware of their health and certainly get tested if they need to. And then I would encourage people to be aggressive if they uh, if they get sick. Um, I actually came, to, I was vaccinated and came down with COVID over Thanksgiving. And uh, I, I was careful and did what my doctor said and got the monoclonal antibodies and all that. And it wasn't very bad at all for me. Aside from being tired, which I'm kind of tired all the time anyway. <laughs> oh, Rico Sane is going to have it knocked away. Good job by good job by the Southside Hawks able to regain composure there. Now there's the inbound to Cameron Anderson. Anderson's going to have it taken away by who else? Isaiah Regular. And regular now is going to draw the foul on the other end. Anderson is going to be called for his second personal foul. Well, regular smooth. You know, he, he got is. that in traffic and just one bounce and goes up for the layup and drew the foul all in one fluid motion. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a ballot this year. I would imagine I will, but I know who's making a good impression the first two games on the uh, all-tournament team. I'll tell you that. Absolutely. Had a kid on the first the first matchup of the of the evening from Fayetteville, 28 points in his matchup. Those guys were good. They are. We're gonna see Fayetteville in game on day three. First free throw was good, by the way. Second one is up and good. He's got 13 points. You look at the shooting percentages. Southside 40 percent. The Wolverines at 47 percent. But it's the turnovers. Southside only has 12. Overton's got 10. Very minimum turnovers in this ball game. You like to see that. 
both of these teams have the ability to play slow, controlled ball, kind of half-court offense, and then all of a sudden just turn it on. Absolutely. Oh, there's a turnover there. And we're going to see Jeremiah Smith back in the ball game now for Southside. It is a 10-point ball game again. Coming up is game three of the night. Popper Bluff. Oh, Lord. Oh, what a move. <laughs> oh, he flexes the old muscle. He deserves it. He deserves that one all the way around. A 12-point lead again, 58-46. to 46. And that'll be a foul on Anderson. That'll be number three on him. Three-point play. It is no good. Rebounded by Cole. So now Rico Sane, they're going to have to really start putting points on the board as Jeremiah Smith cannot get that shot to fall. Bryson and company, this Overton team might be a team that we don't want to see anytime soon. No, I, I was sort of thinking that. <laughs> Thankfully for Popper Bluff's sake, we're not going to see them this week. We'll call it a tie. We'll call it a tie. <laughs> Turnover on Fryson and the Wolverines. Coming up tomorrow, Popper Bluff is going to take on Haywood. We saw them in game one today. On Wednesday, we're going to see Fayetteville. And there is still a chance that Popper Bluff could win this tournament. Absolutely. Believe it or not. Absolutely, there is a chance. I was looking back at the at the winners. You know, we won a few. We have. Um, a few years in there. and But it never was about that. We always wanted this tournament to really showcase the players and good top-notch talent from all over, not just have a tournament where we could win games. Right, absolutely. Freeman picks up the foul for the Wolverines. Oh, the inbound is going to be blocked by regular. That's just another very good block by Isaiah Regular, six foot eight. Another one. There's another arm. one. My goodness. Good timing. Here's the timing of a shot blocker. Going to do another one, no? That's he decided, a good move. Yeah, it was. He didn't want to pick up a foul. No. Smart. Smart that player. Was smart. Ten point lead now. But I tell you, I like the play by Isaiah Regular. Absolutely. He's very controlled. You know, he does what he can do. You know, clearly, he could jump out of the gym and run the floor and all that when he wants to, but he doesn't always do that, which no. the good players know when to do that and when not to do that. Terrell Freeman picks up his fourth personal foul. Coming up, game three of the night, our final game of this first day of the showdown. It'll feature Popper Bluff. They will take on Forest City, Arkansas. Then we're back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for the three-point slam dunk contest. What a move by Jalen Cole. He's got 19 points in this ball game. Oh, what a no-look pass. Oh, it's taken away by Rico Sane. Grady thought he had a no-look pass. Jalen Cole, what a backdoor pass. It's not going to fall, but Cameron Anderson, right place at the right time. I like that Jalen Cole. He's uh, He's got a real knack for the ball. He really does. Passes it very well. Scores. So Anderson is going to shoot two free throws. He's got 14 points. First one is up. It's good. Do you have the, this player's height somewhere, Frank? Which one? Mm, the shooting the free throws. Number, I can't see. I think it's 10. Oh, yeah. You're talking about uh, Cameron Anderson? Yes. Yeah, he is a six foot five senior. Yeah, yeah that kid can play, too. I'd, I'd take him on my team. So what you're saying is you, you put him on your team. I would take him. Isaiah Regular grabbed the rebound, and it's going to go right back. You put a guy like that, 6'5", big kid, up against uh, uh, Mr. Regular, and he doesn't he doesn't look quite so tall anymore. No, three-point <laughs> basket is no good by Rico Sane. And we're going to get a jump ball possession south side. I remember the first time south side it came up and played in the showdown. We were It was our final year at E.T. Peters Gymnasium. They scored 100 points that, that game and won the championship. The finest middle school gym in the state. I'll stand by that. Yes, it is. Bucket is no good by Anderson. Now they are off and running. There's the two-handed dunk, and he draws the foul in transition. 
Cameron Anderson picks up his fourth personal foul. And, you know, we, we talk about a lot of players from all over the, you know, all over coming here and playing, but we always, I, I forget to mention, you know, Tyler Hansbrough and Ben Hansbrough playing in this tournament. Yeah. And, uh, of course, going on to the NBA, guys like Anthony Peeler and Jimmy McKinney and a whole host of players. I got, to meet, I got to meet Roy Williams because of Tyler Hansborough as Rico Sane misses the jumper. What a move by Fryson and dumps it in to Isaiah Regular. Another really good offensive play by Mr. Regular. He catches it. A lot of players would try to do something with it, but no, he came down, gathered himself, went right back up, got a bucket. Going to get a timeout here called. This will be a full timeout. So coming up, so tell me your honest opinion here on the way that we're doing this tournament this year. I kind of like this format, to be honest with you. The way we're doing it is three quality games. I think the way the matchups look, I think, honestly, that all the matchups are going to be intense. Yes, absolutely. It's not a bad way to do a tournament. Uh, you know, we've done a couple of these around, and I like it. Everybody gets their three games. You can still declare a champion. But you're not hung with the bracket that might end up with some real mismatches or, you know, some lopsided games that aren't going to be that great later in the tournament. And, uh, yeah, man, I think it's a good deal. Everybody gets to come play and, and uh, see what we can do out here and get this showdown going and rolling, man. Good quality basketball in an otherwise uh, dreary week <laughs> between well, Christmas and New Year. Well, you know, the good news is, I mean, right now, pretty warm outside so we don't have to worry about snow or ice but what's really crazy is on Saturday of this coming up week it's going to be like 67 degrees in Poplar Bluff with rain storms Sunday 37 and snow possibly well that would be an interesting but that wouldn't really surprise me for, for usually it's an ice it'll be 75 one day and an ice storm the next yeah, day we'll, we'll leave the ice storm alone for, for this for this uh, conversation Still a 9 or 11 point lead. Rico Sane, what a move. He's got eight points here on the night. Now it's down to nine. Now it's becoming very interesting again. You got a move like that. What a job by Jerron Jones. He is just all over the floor. Very athletic. He's got 20 points. You know, we spend so much time talking about Isaiah Regular. You can't forget about Jones. No, he can sure play. And Number you know, two out there. He is really good. I always say it's hard to run across a team that is is more fit, more athletic than, than we are. We may that we may lose a game, but there he goes. Another another two handed another two handed dunk. He's got 22 points. But these kids are very athletic. They're very basketball. They look like basketball players. They're, they you know there's there's no uh, they're very muscular, very long, very lean. Get up and down the floor. Uh, so, yeah, they look like it, and they perform like a basketball team. It's funny how that works. Oh, it's funny. You know, here's the thing. I've got to tell you, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'm not familiar with how this whole YouTube thing works. We started this back in football season, John, and I guess I pushed the wrong button. I didn't know that folks can chat with us on YouTube. And, yeah, there's quite a few folks. Look at that by Isaiah Regular. What a move. So, yeah, we appreciate everybody who's tuning in on social media. Now I see your comments. Isaiah Regular with another rebound following a miss. 68-53. to 53. There's a lot of fans watching right now from Overton and from Southside on YouTube. Very nice. Glad, glad we could provide that. Glad you're up here providing it, Frankie. Absolutely. It's incredible. Yeah, man, it's good for people. People want to see their families, kids, friends, neighbors, whatever, play basketball. Well, I thought what I, would, opportunity. what I thought I would do is on Wednesday, I may stay home and let you get up here and broadcast. There's a steal by Rico Sane, goes in, takes it home. I'll need a little more of that green drink if, <laughs> if you're going to do that. <laughs> Start me off early. Hey, I, I, may, I may decide to get up on, uh, I may decide to go home and, uh, put the YouTube on my big screen and watch it from home. That'd yeah. be kind of nice. Is that hard for you? That's a good question for you. Is it hard for you to watch a game that someone else is broadcasting? Yes. Not, not, not like our Mules no, games, it, but just I, any game. I, no, it, it is because, and the main reason why is for me it's difficult because I do the, you know, obviously in real time I'm going to miss a rebound, I'm going to miss an assist, but I do real-time stats as you are quite aware. And it just it, it 
bothers me when I listen to a broadcast on TV, and I know not everybody has the access that we have. I get all that. But it, it is, it, it's mind-boggling if, if you're doing a broadcast it's okay to go back and forth, but when you don't give stats, like if somebody doesn't tell me that Southside right now they're shooting 39%, 13 turnovers, and the Wolverines are shooting 60 or 53% with 13 turnovers, most of the time those broadcasters don't know what's going on, right. and we're lucky that we have the ability to do all that. Yes, and something I noticed just now being a little bit involved, just to scratch the surface on it, is, is the way that you're able to call out these kids' names. You know, you watch a lot of these broadcasts. If it's not a home team, they'll just say number five or he or nah. him or whatever. And, and uh, you know, mamas want to hear that name on the radio or on the TV for sure. I'm telling you, I underestimated how much fun this was going to be calling, uh, you know, for two out-of-state teams we wouldn't see ever unless it was a showdown. You look at Fryson there, they're going to say the foul occurred on the floor. But we've got some good quality teams and good quality players for that matter that is just unreal. And the way that they're coming out here and playing ball, it's, it's, it's incredible. So Baker's going to pick up that foul, by the way. That'll be his third personal foul. And the first one is on the way by Fryson. It's good. He'll get one more. We're going to get a couple of subs coming in now. And Cash you know, Montgomery's going to check in, and Amari Goodman. Sorry about that. I don't know. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, Memphis isn't that far away. We used to say we're halfway from Memphis to St. Louis, and yep. people love to go down to Memphis and get some good barbecue, listen to some music, hang out a little bit. So, uh, you know, it's nice to see uh, people come up here and hang out and get to see how we do it. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun to see. We love the showdown, and... Southside is going to suffer their, from what I understand, good rebound there by Overton. From what we were told by their coach, they were 8-0 coming into this ball game. But we knew, if they knew coming in, it was going to be a very tough ball game. And sure enough, that's wh where we are. It's a 14-point lead right now. Hard to believe that it's already the fourth quarter. You can't win them all. You can win a lot of them, but these kids are going to benefit from this team. Obviously playing a really good team, uh, good experience that they couldn't get somewhere else. And to get it here, take it back home with them, and then parlay it into more wins later in the season. Absolutely. I know it's better to lose early in the season. I did learn that. Yeah, better so off to win at the end. Like yeah, last, like it's a lot easier to lose in the beginning of this season. So, that being said, Overton is going to come away with a big win here tonight. 69-55 to 55 is the current score. And I want to give take an opportunity real fast and, and thank everybody for tuning in tonight, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, whatever the cases are. We've got a lot of folks tuning in from everywhere. And we really, honestly, are just overwhelmed with how many folks are tuning in both places. This is great. Now that we've started this, they're going to count that basket by Jordan Fryson. 71 to 55 is going to be the final score. So here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to reset here real quick. We're going to let John and I get a quick uh, drink. We're going to go down and get ready for our third and final game of the evening coming up. It'll feature Poplar Bluff. It'll feature Forest City. We're also going to bring that game to you right here on YouTube at Facebook. We're not going to go anywhere. And we're also going to add our radio broadcast into it as well, with it being a Popper Bluff broadcast. So with that being said, our next game is supposed to start at about, they're saying 20 minutes. So there you go. So we'll take a five or so minute break. We're going to come right back, and we'll get you set for this third and final game of the evening between Popper Bluff and Forest City, Arkansas. Overton, they win today 71 to 55. Thank you again for all those who tuned in on social media, Facebook and YouTube. Really appreciate you guys as always. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come right back in about five or so minutes and count you down to Popper Bluff Mules basketball. You're listening to the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.
And good evening and welcome back now to the 34th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. I'm Frankie Castile and we are so excited to bring you game three of the night. Joining us right now to kind of set the stage a little bit, we're going to welcome in now the head coach of Popper Bluff, head coach Will Durden. And coach, tonight, give me your first thoughts here on the overall showdown, the first two ball games. They've been some pretty good ball games so yeah, far. Yeah, there's some uh, pretty good teams, you know, if, uh, we were in, during the <clears throat> banquet. Some of the teams talk about they had left some kids home, but they must not have left the, the right kids home because all the teams look pretty good. They really do. And talk about Forest City coming in here tonight. They're traditionally they're not as short as they are here tonight, or at least that's what I'm seeing on paper. Yeah, I, I'm, you, we didn't know what we were going to get when we were trying to see this, and um, but we watched some film on them here lately, and man, they play hard though. They're going to shoot a lot of threes, and they're going to get up in our face and press, and um, you know, it's, it's probably going to be an exciting game because they're not going to go away, and they're real pesky. How just how enthused is your team? Uh, just being able to, you know, last year we couldn't have this because of COVID. Tonight we're going to have a good game, a good crowds coming out to watch your meals for the first time play at home. How excited is your team to be back on their home floor playing in this showdown? Well, the guys are really excited. I mean, they really missed the event last year, and uh, you know, ever since last year we've had the senior uh, senior group, you know, constantly asking, "Hey, coach, we're going to have a showdown. We're going to have a showdown." It's like I don't know. We'll have to wait to see uh, but it's here and you know they'll be ready to play and, and hopefully uh, you know we'll have a good you know crowd support tonight the first time we played at home it's nice not being on the road and um, just it's good overall let me ask you what did you guys work on following your win against Waynesville back on December the 18th what did you guys work on in practice over the last few days to get ready for this showdown you know we, we, we came in and we worked a lot on offense I mean we're still not where we need to be offensively and you know, of course we you know did a lot of defensive stuff but you know we're working on some of our transition uh, both offense and defense I mean we, we worked on a lot of stuff we, we got to shoot the ball better we shot a lot over the break um, just you know we're, we're trying to get there and the, the kids came in worked hard we had four good days of practice before good. Christmas and came back in uh, yesterday and then got a good one in and everybody for the most part kind of getting healthier how is uh, Gage's uh, thumb is it better now he has it on his hand uh, <laughs> we don't know uh, how it's going to be until he catches that first pass so we'll see well coach thank you so much for the opportunity good luck tonight we'll see you guys afterwards All right, thanks coach Will Durden joining us live always does a great job love having coach Durden live on the program. Our pregame show is brought to you by the Bank of Missouri. We are getting reset tonight. We're going to bring you Popper Bluff Mules basketball. And of course, we've got Mules coming your way. We've got the uh, Forest City coming up as well. The Mustangs out of Forest City, and we're going to see what happens coming up here tonight as the Mules get set to take on a really good team coming your way. And, of course, tonight we're going to have a lot going on. By the way, tomorrow, by the way, we are going to be not only bringing you the ball games tomorrow night, but Tim and I are going to be back in the morning as well. And we're also going to be streaming the three-point contest and the slam dunk contest tomorrow morning as well. We're going to have a little bit of audio for you. When I say a little bit of audio, I'll get on there and talk a little bit about the players or whatever. But we're going to let you guys at home watch this. It's a lot of fun, and I'm just excited to uh, be able to uh, to do this. Tim, get over here. Take that headset off. I'm going to I'm going to bring Tim in. Tim, let me tell you. Let me introduce you guys to Tim Hicks. Tim Hicks does so much for what we're able to do. And I got to ask you, you know, we've been doing this now, this streaming bit now, for almost a year now. I would have never thought in a year's time we would be where we are. How much fun is this? Hey, I'm having a blast, Frankie. You know, I'm a visual guy, and I, it's, it's really cool to be able to bring the game to people visually on, on Facebook and YouTube. You know, this technology that we have in our pockets how cool is that wouldn't you love that this when you were in high school man i'm telling you i would have never never dreamed of that when we started this a year ago our first our first broadcast that we did it was terrible we tanked so bad <laughs> we were in new 
New Madrid. I'll never forget it. We were in New Madrid, and the bad thing about that was you had a blowout. Right, right. And that was a sign right there. It was right. going to fail. Yeah, my car. I mean, yeah. to clarify that, my, my car had a flat. Yeah, man. car had a flat tire, and so you and I, we, we couldn't ride together. We had to go separate directions, and so we did. I went on down to New Madrid, and you had to get towed back and came down later. And I got the radio equipment all set up, and you got the other stuff set up. Mm -hmm. And literally in the first four minutes of the broadcast, we noticed how the video was so choppy. <laughs> and you were like, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm doing the radio thing. So you make a decision. And, I mean, but you look at where we've come right now. I was, I was telling Coach Jordan off the air, he was asking me how the streaming was going for the other two ball games. And I was blown away with how many folks we had watching on YouTube and on Facebook for the first two out-of-state games. Right. It was incredible. And I'm just excited that we're able to uh, put this on for a lot of folks. And a lot of folks may not be able to uh, travel mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. But they're able to watch it from home. And, yeah. you know, we're... We're giving them good commentary. Great video work from you, by the way. You're doing a Thank great you. job. Everybody's loving the video shots. And the cool thing is we're going to be here on Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Yeah, you and I learned a tough lesson. This is about connectivity. We can have the prettiest video in the world out there, the best-looking video, but if we can't connect to the Internet, man, it's it, that's our bottleneck, you know. And so Frankie and I did a lot of homework, a lot of looking at tech, a lot of technology out there. And uh, River Radio invested in in our, this product, and we were able to bring it um, and, and, and some new equipment in and upgrade our connectivity, and that was the secret weapon for us, wasn't it, Frankie? Now, let me ask you this. This is a, a completely... A, a, a moron kind of question, but because you know this, you know I don't know YouTube I'll that well. I'll give you well. a moron answer, man. I, I, I don't know YouTube that well. You right, do, right? I'm so proud. Yeah. We we've not really promoted it very much, but we're we're just now over a hundred subscribers. Uh, That's cool. awesome. So does that mean that our 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 actual link can now be shortened? I was, how does that work? Yeah, yeah. I was told, and YouTube. Here we are talking about YouTube. Right, we should be focusing on the game. Basketball game. Yeah. YouTube is uh, changing the rules all the time, and they. they do it a lot, but from what I understand, and we're going to look into this further, we're able to take the link, you know, the like uh, River Radio to PB, and actually promote that link instead of having this long uh, address as a URL, as a connection. Gotcha. And yeah. so, from what I understand, and we'll, we'll investigate this, since we have 100 subscribers, which is a, a go post, so to speak, for, for YouTube. And um, we're able to, to make it more marketable and easier for people to remember. And we're going to look into that further uh, after this tournament's over. <laughs> All right. well, we're going to do it. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to get to our starting lineups. Thank you so much, Tim, for right. jumping on with me. I know I'm going he's, he's to hop on the camera now and do his thing. I'm not sure where John Scott went, but I don't see him in the crowd. So he must be hanging around somewhere. In the meantime, we want to get to our starting lineups here tonight. We will do that coming up here in just a few moments as we get set to bring you this third and final contest of the evening between Poplar Bluff and Forest City. We will take a quick timeout. We'll come right back, and we will have the starting lineups coming up between the Mules and the Mustangs out of Forest City. You're listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.
And we are back here as we get set now to bring you Mules basketball. And here's the ironic thing here, folks. We just got this information that uh, Forest City, we are in the process right now of changing everything. Their roster hasn't really changed, but what, what, but what did change was the numbers because they're going to be the away team now. They are wearing their blue jersey, so therefore we are in the process right now of changing all the numbers over so that way we know exactly who we're talking about. So that's why we had that lengthy delay. We wanted to make sure that everything was the way it was supposed to be. So with that being said, we are about to that point where we're going to be bringing you our national anthem coming up here in just a moment. So get ready for that as we get ready for Popper Bluff Mules basketball. I think now all of our all of our numbers are are just about done. So yeah, John, everything has changed since we last spoke. Oh, and turn your mic on. Sorry about Well, that. I was going to say, Frankie, I thought I was losing my mind. I had to go borrow some Tums or something. I've done half of a game, and I'm already needing Tums. And then I got back up here, and my, the mic on this uh, headset appears to be on the left side, and it was on the right side earlier, I think. Oh, so, you have something on? No, no, everything's cool. It's just the actual physical thing was on the other oh, side of my face. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I think okay. either that or they gave me something besides thumbs. I don't gotcha, know. Gotcha, gotcha. Interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to our national anthem. Now, here's the thing. If you're watching us on social media, you're going to hear everything kind of go silent. It's only because of copyright infringement issues. If it was the band playing, we could have it. But we don't want to get kicked off of Facebook for 24 hours and YouTube. So as soon as the National Anthem plays, if you're tuning in on social media, everything will go silent. But then as soon as it's over, we'll be able to uh, bring it back live. Right now they're talking about Maurice Webb, who passed away tragically this year. Let's go down courtside. Outstanding job with our national anthem here, and I thought that was a great tribute as well to honor 
the late coach of Forest City and honoring our good friend, our dear friend, Maurice Webb as well, who passed away earlier this year. Of course, you know Maurice Webb very well, John. He was a great, great guy for Popper Bluff, and we're sure going to miss him. Absolutely. We are a great athlete, a great role model for the community. Great community leader from a great family, and it is just really a shame to, to see Maurice gone uh, way too soon. So now we have the mules. <laughs> that ginger went out the wrong pipe. <laughs> there we go. So we are gearing up now for the third and final game. So here we go. As we get ready now, let's see, going back to our comments here, Angela, the three-point and slam dunk contest tomorrow is at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is when we will have all of that for you. That's free of charge, if I remember, Frankie, isn't it? It is free of charge. People like to hear that. Keyshawn Washington. Lamarian Randall. Antonio Jordan. So there you go. There is the starting five for the Four City Mustangs. And now you can hear the fans really getting excited here for their hometown fans. Our first home game of 2021. Mules, by the way, they're being coached by Will Durden. He is in his 10th season, a record, by the way, of 146 to 93. As you see, Darian Webb getting that first nod. And Darian Webb is averaging about 15 points a ball game. That's incredible. Also, Gavin Rivers now, who is averaging five points a ball game. You've got Ventress Williams, about four points a ball game. And you've got Gage Rivers averaging about 10 points a ball game. And at number 11, Nick Brummett, who I thought played one of the better games he has had so far. He played that live in Waynesville on Saturday, the 18th. So now, can the Mules get it done? That is the question. You're right, Frankie. You know, Brummett has really come a long way this season. He's a good player, but he's coming off the football field where he had a really good season as well. And he's just now getting back to basketball form. So I hope to see great things from him tonight. Absolutely. So now here we go. I'm ready. You ready, John? I'm ready. I'm Frankie Castillo alongside John Scott. Let us know on social media where you're tuning in from. We'll try to get to all your comments coming up. Ball goes in the air. We are live and underway. Forest City now is going to control Keyshawn Washington. He will control the tip guarded by Gage Rivers. I'll tell you right now, your roster is not going to be correct for Forest City there, John. They changed all the numbers on us. <laughs> what kind of trick is that? All their jersey numbers were, it's it's funny because during the uh, banquet, they told me everything was right. They got here. It was all wrong. <laughs> well, that's just the fun so, of the game, right? <laughs> I guess so. We always have that one. Keyshawn Washington, three-point basket is no good. We're going to get a whistle and a foul here. Good job by Gage Rivers. Did a great job. Or make that Gavin, Gavin Rivers, rather. I get those two confused it's all the time. Good to see Gavin get in there on the first possession, get up, get a rebound, get a foul, you know, get him in the game right away. Quick foul by Lamarian Randall, number 10, at 4-4 four, four City. Gage Rivers now. He has been bothered by the thumb. Looks good right now. Kicks it outside to Webb. Brummett is going to have it taken away. Quick steal. Turnover by the Mules. 7.07 .07 now to play here in the first quarter. Quickly down the floor now is Robert Echoes, and he will pick up a foul. Looks like Fort City likes to run up and down, which is our style of play. Yes, they are very, very quick, very, very fast. So now Eccles is going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. No score. Our third game of the night. I'm just astounded by how fast this night has went. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you're slack and you weren't here for the first game. <laughs> Part of the first game. I you had were, to settle in. You were eating a hot dog. <laughs> Second free throw is up. It's a very good. good. A very good hot a dog. A very good tasty hot dog from Popper Bluff. 
Mules trail 1-0 here. Gage Rivers now back outside to Darian Webb. Webb coming in, averaging 15 points a ball game. You can tell that Darian Webb, he puts a lot of time in the gym during the offseason. He can hit the floaters. He'll hit the three-point ball, our best free throw shooter as well. Brummett is going to have it ripped away. Thankfully, it's going to go off the fingertips of Makayan White. Absolutely. Uh, Webb is really a dedicated athlete. This, the, the training regimen he does even during the season is really, oh my really goodness. something. Gage Rivers now, or Gavin Rivers, rather, gets it back out. Now finds Gage from the free throw line. Like to see that happen from Gage Rivers right off the bat. It's like when he goes, the whole team goes. Keyshawn Washington, turnover, and the Mules will get it right back. Boy, good job by the Mules here. They are playing really good right now. They lead at 2-1. to one. I know it's a 2-1 to one ball game, but the way they're playing right now is very good. Look at that student section out there. We'll get a good shot about that later on. I can't I just I'm so excited for the students who came out on night one of our showdown when this showdown was in jeopardy 24 hours ago. Darian Webb drains it. Gage Rivers set him up nicely. You like to see that by Darian Webb. They lead now five to one. Going coast to coast the other way. Robert Echoes. He goes in, banks it in. He's got all three points right now. Gavin Rivers. Gets it to Fentress. Turnaround hook shot is no good. Gavin Rivers, though, and he's not going to be able to maintain possession. Good work. Good hustle, though. He got in there. Very aggressive play. He really did. So Popper Bluff still leads it 5-3. to 5.38 to play here in the first quarter of play. It is our third and final game of the night. We've got two more action-packed days coming your way tomorrow and Wednesday. Popper Bluff, by the way, is going to play early on Wednesday at 2.30. Does that, mean, does, that, does that mean you'll be covering the night shift? I'll go home and watch the games on the tube. That's a long time from now, Frankie. Who knows what's be going on Wednesday at 2.30. <laughs> Nick Brummett now gets it outside to Gavin Rivers. Pull-up jumper is going to be short. No good. And the rebound is going to fall to Robert Echoes. Boy, he has been everywhere so far tonight for Four City. You know, one, one thing, Frankie, that we've learned is that we have that early game on Wednesday. So our team, these other teams can travel. It's right. Which sometimes we don't get that courtesy no, in other places. No, we do not. Uh, Waynesville, um, <laughs> need I, need I much keep everywhere. going? <laughs> everywhere else we go, we, we don't get no courtesy. 8.30 p.m. game on a Saturday night. Yeah. Gavin Rivers picks up his second personal foul. Echoes, Echoes, rather, will now go to the free throw line to shoot two. It's five to three in favor of the Mules. First one is no good. We're going to have to see a couple of subs coming in now. For Forest City, Marcus Britt is going to come in. He and for, will, I'm sorry, Frankie, no, but I was going to say for people who uh, you know are working or whatever and can't be here Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, be sure and tune in. It's a good thing you can watch it. Absolutely. Gage Rivers also going to take a quick seat. Cannon Carr comes in for him. A free throw is up and good. It is now 5-4. to four. The score, what a good move by Darius Graham. Quickly down the floor. Boy, he is, he's going to be such a good ball player. Only a sophomore. Good hands, good feet. That, short, that shot is short. Left-handed to you know, Darius, Darius. He really... Floats too, he can fly. Darius Webb, speaking of Darius Webb, can you hear the crowd in the background? There's a steal. Oh, we couldn't finish. But a foul going to be called, and we're going to see another sub coming in now for Forest City. Right now, Forest City's a little frustrated with our speed. You know, they've had a few turnovers down there. It's still a pretty close game, but. Uh, they're probably not used to playing a team that can run as fast as we can. I would agree with you 100% on that. Melvin Shaw comes in. Servo Fisher is also coming in the ball game. Randall and White are going to take a seat. Darius Graham missing the first free throw. He'll get one more. And this time he makes it in. Oh, nope, it's going to be 
That's not going to count because it's going to be a lane violation. So, that being said, it's still going to be 9-4. to four. And Jared and Young just checked in. Yes, he did. Good to see Jared early in the game. Come in for Brummett. And he's already getting a good shot there. Winds up getting a big rebound for the Mules. Darian Webb near the free throw line. There's the running floater, a little bit strong. Could not finish. And here comes the Mustangs down by five points. They dump it off outside. Three-point basket is no good. It's going to be rebounded. Shaw could not get it to fall. Darian Webb quickly down the floor. Cannon Carr goes up, and he scores two points. And now it's an 11-4 lead by Popper Bluff. Boy, it makes you wonder. There's another good steal. Good job by the Mules. Oh, the Mules could not come up with it. Boy, the Mules are playing quick. And this makes you think if this tournament would have stayed the way it was, just how deep the Mules could have went in this year's tournament. Absolutely. They're, they're, that was a little bit too fancy, that play, but they're really all over this team defensively. You can tell they had a good break at the right time. They are really clicking. There's another good steal by Darian Webb. Nearly had another forced turnover. 3.30 to play, or 3.20 rather to play. Darian Webb. Washington near the elbow. Pulls it up and shoots it and scores. Nice shot, smooth shot. His first bucket of the game. It's now 11-6. Gage Rivers now. Darian, Darius Graham is set to check in next. Fentress Williams, or make that Torrance Williams rather. Throws in double coverage. Going to be taken away. Turnover by the Mules. Washington tries to do the reverse layup. He's going to be fouled, I believe, by Darian Webb. If it's on Webb, it's number one for him, three for the team. Not a bad foul. That that, that would have been a layup. You know, it's it's not a bad foul. Kid, this kid can shoot free throws. So Keyshawn Washington, he's got two points on the night so far. We'll see if he can shoot the free throws. First one is up. And it is good. So far, it's good to see the Mules play well at home. You know, it's different. They haven't played here all year. So to see them come in, get some crowd, uh, you never know which way that's going to go the first game. So far, so good. Second one coming up here by Washington. Makes them both. It's now a three-point game. So Gage Rivers back on the floor for the Mules. Cannon Carr works it over to Graham. Jared and Young fighting for position. Gets it inside the paint, goes up and scores. I can guarantee you they're not going to take the ball away from Jared. And no, you're not. <laughs> Good move by Jared and able to get position inside the paint. He went for a steal. Fisher on the other end knocks it down. 13 to 10. Good move by Darius Graham again. Count it in the basket. Jared and Young coming up big early. I like to see that. That is two back-to-back -back plays. You know, Jared is really getting back to basketball form coming off his injury last year. You see him getting up down the floor faster, being more aggressive, scoring the ball. He's really coming along nicely. He really is. Washington picks up that foul, by the way. Jared and Young, 15 to 10 is the score. So now the three-point play coming up here by Jared and Young. Free throw. It is no good. Presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. Rebounded by Eccles. Eccles now going inside the paint. What a shot. He's got six points here in the first quarter. The team's got 12. He's got six of them. We've got a whistle here and a foul. There were two players there. Is it on Washington or Eccles? going to be on Eccles, his first, team foul number four. Oh, what a move again. Gage Rivers finds a wide open. Jared and Young, he's got six points he, in this first he's, quarter. He's racking them up. Jared and Young, what a first quarter he is having right now. Another steal by Jared. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Washington, wide open three, yes. He's got seven points. 
17 to 15 the score. And once again, the Mules on the floor nearly turn it over. Good hustle by Gage Rivers. What a backdoor pass to who else? Jared and Young. That guy's lit up tonight, man. He's playing some ball. Eight points in the first quarter of play. In a turnover by Forest City. Melvin Shaw could not hang on to the ball. Washington now going to check in for Shaw. On the other end, Mules have two more players coming in at Darian Webb and Torrance Williams. Jared and Young is going to take a quick timeout. Just needs a little wind. Little wind. Little you know, wind. The good thing about this team is they play hard and fast, and the coach never gets upset when they play that hard and need to come no. out for a minute. How could you be upset with Jared and eight points here in the first quarter? But it's not the points, it's his defense. Absolutely, he's all over the court. He is all over the place here tonight. Good move by Darian Webb. The ball gets a little bit out of control. Good job by Torrance Williams, able to somehow fight for it. And now we've got a whistle and a foul coming up. I think it's on Fisher. It is. And that is team foul number five here in the first quarter of play. If you're watching us on social media, let us know where you're tuning in from. Darian Webb missing the big three-pointer there. Marcus Britt on the rebound. And ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Washington. Let us know what team you're going for, whether it's Forest City or Popper Bluff. Antonio Jordan now going to check in for Keyshawn Washington. So now Darian Webb but works it around to Fentress, or make that Torrance Williams. Torrance near the elbow, back outside to Gage. Gage now, top of the key, 25 seconds and counting. Brummett goes up, and he'll draw the foul, and he's going to shoot two free throws. Presented by Christian Automotive and Tire, it'll be a foul on Marcus Britt. Mules basketball this season being brought to you by First Midwest Bank, Kevin's Auto Repair, Popper Bluff Realty, Legacy Farm and Land Specialists, Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, the Ozark Federal Credit Union, Air Solutions, and First Choice Insurance. Cannon Carr going to check in now for Fentress Williams. Free throw was up and good, by the way, by Nick Brummett, presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. Second one is up, and it is also good. It's 21-15 now, a six-point lead. D. Slavings says, let's go Mules. Ron Withrow tuning in. He's a big Mules fan. Do you know Ron, John? I know Ron. Yes, He's I do. He's a very good guy. Absolutely. Shot is up. It's no good by White at the end of one quarter of play. It's 21-15. Ronald Wittenberg is tuning in from Evansville, Indiana. Like to have him alongside tonight. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come right back. Mules lead this game at 21-15 on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Want a career and not just another job? It's waiting for you at Briggs & Stratton. Great pay, great benefits, and continuing education. Everything you and your family deserve. Go to careers.vasco.com and look at Poplar Bluff job openings. All right, we are back here live in Poplar Bluff where we are gearing up now for quarter number two. Uh, breaking news coming in right now. We were just told that tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. during the three-point slam dunk contest, John Scott's going to treat us on the slam dunk contest. <laughs> At nerf. least that's what I was told anyway. Be some nerf, nerf slam dunk, maybe. Some nerf, oh, what a move by Gage Rivers to a, oh, my goodness. Brummett could not finish. That was pretty. That would have been pretty. 
if he was able to, to go ahead and take care of that. Darian Webb comes right back in with a big steal. Webb outside to Gavin Rivers. Rivers now is going to be in the backcourt and picked up by Jordan. Jordan goes up and he will score. Both teams a little bit out of control right now out of, that, uh, out of the new quarter. Uh, just up and down a little bit too fast. Just a little bit out of control. We need to slow it down just a hair. So a couple shots to fall would be a good shot. Absolutely. Torrance Williams is going to pick up the foul. 21-17 to score. Jordan for a free throw. Free throw is up, and it is good. So 7.15 to play here in the second quarter. Gavin Rivers with two fouls. He's back on the floor. You were talking about this during the last time out. It's amazing how, oh, they're going to wave the shot off. Darian Webb, I thought, he, I thought he was in the act, but they're saying he was not in the act. What I was going to say was, you were talking about this during the uh, commercial timeout. It was, it's amazing how quiet this gym was the first two games and how loud it is here in this game. You know, it is loud. We've been to, you know, I've been to all the games, the weight games. We've been there, and, and uh, I don't remember being as loud as this gym tonight for this game, which early in the, you know, early in the game even. People, uh, people are here and having fun. Chelsea Scarlett tonight tuning in. She says, go Poplar Bluff. Darian Webb, free throw, presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. He made the first, he'll get the second. Mules basketball, presented by Las Margaritas, Mayas, and Taco Taco. Christian Automotive and Tire, eye care specialist, Larry Hillis Dodge, at Briggs and Stratton, the Scott Law Group, LLC, and the Bank of Missouri. And Darian Webb, he knocks them both down. He's got seven points here in this ballgame. 23-18 to score. It's a five-point lead right now. Five-point lead. What a move going in. Marcus Britt couldn't finish. Something else, Frankie, when you go out to other gyms around the state even, it's nice to come home and see how nice of a facility that we do have. It really is. Second personal foul for Torrance Williams. That's the fifth team foul, by the way. Marcus Britt, he is the coach's son. And we're going to see a couple of more guys coming back in for the Mules. Gage Rivers and Jared and Young is going to come in for Gavin Rivers and for Torrance Williams. Well, those coaches' sons are usually dangerous. <laughs> yes, they are. And second one is up, and it is no good. Rebounded by Darius Graham. Darian Webb now from the free throw line. He is money from that shot. You're not going to make him miss from there. Nice little basketball play right there. Love to see that. Little 20, to go. 25-19. Keyshawn Washington draining another three-point basket. That's his second of the game. They're going to have to guard Mr. Washington. Yep, he, he's got ten points. On the other end, Mules could not convert. So now looking at the other end, another three-point basket on the way. No good. Nice. There is Graham with that left hand. Well, I tell you, he is coming on strong. Got He's got four points. Small, small lineup in right now. Charge. And a charge is going to be taken. Keyshawn Washington. It's nice to stay with them, get some rebounds, get some defensive stops with a small lineup. Absolutely. We're going to get a timeout called by Popper Bluff. Joanne Hicks is tuning in. Tucker and Joanne is watching. Appreciate that. Ron Withrow saying good evening. Love to have everybody alongside for our first Mules home game this season. We'll step away 30 seconds. Mules lead by five on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Breathe easier and extend the life of your HVAC system plus fewer repair bills with Air Solutions' comprehensive maintenance plan. You'll save money and get the peace of mind that only comes from calling Air Solutions, 785-1500.
First Choice Insurance. Let their family protect your family. They provide insurance for home, auto, life, health, farm, and recreational vehicles. Call today for a free quote. 573-686-2870. First Choice Insurance. Our family protecting you. And we are back here live as the Mules now lead it by five points. The PA announcer had it right. He was going over the way this bracket style works. Darian Webb could not convert. And it's rebounded by Lamari and Randall. Randall now with a shot. It's going to be a little bit short. About 16 feet away, Gage Rivers now. What a move to a wide open Darius Graham. <laughs> I don't know how they do that. I don't know how they're doing it. But they are sure fun to watch. Antonio Jordan nearly had it taken away, but the PA announcer was going over this bracket and said, thanks for your patience during this crazy COVID time, and that's an understatement of 2021. Just how crazy this year has been. Absolutely. Hopefully it'll get back more to normal. We're pretty good here. I hope it'll get more to normal. Three-point basket is no good. Oh, it, is, it, it, oh. it does drop. Slop counts. That's yes, it say. does. Antonio Jordan. So now, Gage Rivers, oh, he is on fire tonight. That's his fourth point, but it's not about the points as much as it is the assist right now. 31-25, Mules, they are having a good time right now. No up, doubt about it. Up and down, up and down. Good to see Gage. In the now we're going to get a whistle here and a foul coming up. It's going to be a foul on Washington, and he'll go to the free throw line. And who will they call that on? Nick Brummett. That is team foul number six. Keyshawn Washington. He's already got ten points. He's two of two on the free throw line so far tonight. And they're going to say it was not in the act of shooting. It was on the floor. There's a steal by the Mules. Gavin Rivers takes it away, and he will go coast to coast. That's what the Mules need to get him going. Gavin Rivers... Jared and Young is getting there's another steal for the Mules. Oh, Mules throw it away. Boy, they're playing so fast right now. Just take off, just full speed. They need to just turn it down a half a notch. And we're going to get a whistle. Timeout. We'll step away with them. It is a eight-point ball game right now. The Mules lead at 33-25 on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Go Mules! The Bank of Missouri wishes the Mules a fantastic season. Live well, play well, bank well. At 130 years strong, you can count on us to support you through all the seasons of life. The Scott Law Group, a family-owned firm providing trusted legal counsel for matters pertaining to real estate, personal injury, criminal, and family law. Call 785-4688 or online, scottlawgroupmode.com. And we are back here from the timeout presented by Larry Hillis Dodge. Hopper Bluff right now. They are finding everything within them. They are doing a fantastic job here in this ball game as of right now. Everything. You can tell that this team has really matured over the Christmas break. And there's another turnover. This one by Washington. Mules right now will have a Darius Graham. Gage Rivers, Jared and Young is going to take a quick breather. Frentress back in. 3.37 to play, first half, 33-25. Darius Graham gets bumped by Makayan White, and that'll be a foul on him. That's number nine for the team. The Mules right now, they are shooting. I don't even want to tell you what they're shooting. I don't want to jinx them. They are shooting 67% right now, 14 out of 21, but that's not what impresses me. They've only got three turnovers right now in the first half. Knock on wood. <laughs> Free throw is no good. I'm glad you didn't ask me how many because I wasn't keeping track of it this time. So Darius Graham missing another free throw opportunity. Graham here tonight is 0 of 2 on the free throw line. 
That's one thing about our mules that we're going to have to improve on coming up is our free throw shooting ability. There's a good steal by Gavin Rivers. And it's going to be out of bounds. Last touch by our friends from Forest City. You know, Frankie, yeah, I think some of the free throw, I've thought about that over the last few years. I think that we play so fast and so hard that our guys are gasping for air a lot of times. Yeah. It's a little bit harder to shoot when you can't get any air. Lee Wallace is tuning in tonight from Evansville, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Three-point basket by Darian Webb, presented by Popper Bluff Realty Legacy Farm and Land Specialist. And all the way down the court quickly is going to be a foul on the Mules. And I think it's on Darian Webb. If it's on Darian Webb, it's number two, and it is. Going to be on Darian Webb. 2.55 to play here in the first half of play. We've run the ball very well uh, tonight so far. You know, a few turnovers here and there, but overall we've done <laughs> it's, yeah. it's crazy how fast those guys get back. Gage, Gavin, when they take off, man, they're gone. 2.55 here to play in the first half of play. Coming up at halftime, we'll break it all down. What are we discussing at halftime, by the way? Are we discussing... What do you want to talk about? We'll talk about we'll talk about our big lead. How about that? Our big lead <laughs> that we're gonna have. It'll be twenty points by half. You can quote him saying <laughs> that, folks. Maybe not this half, some other game. Oh gotcha. It'll be half. Nick Brummett's gonna come in now for Gavin Rivers. He's blown away with all the amount of folks on social media watching tonight. We love having a big audience. Social media, YouTube, you name it. It's nice for people to be able to watch, you know, and if they can't get here for whatever reason, to Absolutely. be able to see it. Oh, what a no-look pass by Gage Rivers. It's going to be going to be a turnover on Fentress. Good job by Eccles. Long three-pointer, and it's going to go in and out no good. Last touched by the Mules. Marcus Britt was able to uh, shoot that. He was from way downtown. Now we're going to get it back in to Marcus Britt. I got to say hats off to our hospitality workers today, too. Oh, Marcus Britt that time. That was nothing but net. He found that three-pointer. Gage Rivers is going to have it taken away by Britt, and we're going to get a foul. Is that going to be on Darius? No, it's going to be on Ventress. Yeah, a little bit, little bit out of sync right now. A little bit. So we're going to see Cannon Carr back in the ball game now for Fentress Williams. Did you enjoy the hospitality room today at the showdown? I did. I did. There's nice, nice folks back there. Lonnie Taylor, some guys back there yep. helping. It's very nice. Uh, they always do a good job with that. Speaking of Lonnie Taylor, there he is. Here he comes. He'll yes. be joining us at halftime for <laughs> talk, a little bit. Talk about our uh, hospitality suite. That's right. He'll be joining us coming up at the half. We always like getting him in at halftime and giving the, the kudos down to the hospitality Absolutely. workers and all those great sponsors who step up to make this a possibility. Because what I like about this tournament is not only do they... Nick Brummett is going to be called for the foul. That's his second. I was going to say they do such a great job taking care of the coaches, taking care of their families. I mean, they do it all down there. Absolutely. Lonnie, you know, retired from the school, and he's really a good guy to see. And, I, you know, I like having the tournament because I don't really see him around very often, but I do see him here. And, and last year, you know, we didn't have it. We could see him, but it's always nice to see a smile and good spirits. Absolutely. 36-31 the score. It's a five-point lead. 2.22 left here before halftime. You can just hear the crowd in the background. It is loud here tonight. Darian Webb now brings the ball up the floor, coming up on 2.15 to play before half. Gage Rivers back outside to Gavin. Webb gets a lane, goes up with the left hand and finishes strong. Really a nice shot. On the other end, it should be a, oh, I thought it was going to be a walk. It's going to be a foul instead on the Mules. Is it going to be on Carr? Yes, it is. Cannon Carr picks up his first. Darian Webb's already got 14 points here in the first half. He's having the game of his career tonight so he far. He is having quite the game. 
Going to be a full timeout called by Popper Bluff. We'll step away for 30 seconds. Mules lead by six on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Some things have changed since 1952. We changed our name, expanded our territory, and added branches in the communities we serve. But the most important thing remains the same. We treat our members like family. Experience the credit union difference. Ozark Federal Credit Union. Membership eligibility required. Insured by NCUA. Christian Automotive and Tire. Quality name brand tires that you know and trust. They also have ASC certified mechanics that have the training tools and knowledge. And we are back right here. Our timeouts are brought to you by Larry Hillis Dodge. And for those of you that are tuning in right now on social media, here's one for you. Coming up on, if you're living in the Popper Bluff area, Saturday we're going to see heavy rain and storms. And then I was just told by John Scott, his favorite time of year, we could be seeing snowflakes fly on Sunday. <laughs> right. Sunburn on Saturday. <laughs> Sunburn Saturday. And, uh, snow, snow on snow Sunday. That's perfect. <laughs> my son's already asked me a thousand times as we see White making the free throw. My son's already said, Dad, is it going to snow enough to get out of school Monday? I said, probably not, son. It's <laughs> probably, not going to happen. Probably not this Monday. Not this Monday. Both free throws are in. It's 38-34 now. I wonder if he's watching right now. He's always complaining because he can't watch the games whenever we're gone. And now he can watch it. And I bet he's not watching it. Washington, he goes coast to coast. He hands that off to Eccles. Now it's a two-point game. Four cities really turning the pressure on. Popper Bluff right now. So now Gavin Rivers. Outside the Darius Graham. Graham getting a lot of minutes here. Gage Rivers for three. This one is off the mark. Good job by Cannon Carr, though. Puts his body on the line. And they get the shot opportunity. Darius Graham can't finish. What a move by Cannon Carr. Oh, the Mules had three opportunities and just could not finish. We need a bucket right there. And a travel, I believe. Yes, it is. And Eccles is like, I didn't travel. I think you did. And now they're going to put in Jared and Young. He'll come in for Gage Rivers. One eleven to play here before halftime. Mules lead by two. Coming up on the minute mark here before halftime, Cannon Carr. Putting his body in there, banging around, getting the rebounds. They go right back to Jared and Young. Why not? He's already got eight points, and I'm okay with that shot miss by Jared and Young. He banks it in off the glass, a little too strong. Jared and Young, the last couple of games, John, I'm not sure if you picked up on this or not, but I'm thinking that Young is starting to find his place with this team, and he is really getting better, and oh my goodness, Three-point basket by Marcus Britt, and it gives the Mustangs the lead. And just like that, a steal by Washington on the inbound. And now they've got their biggest lead of the game. Yeah, that, that steal on the inbound shouldn't happen. That doesn't need to happen. That threat three is hard to guard that. It was from half court almost. Yeah, I'm getting a, I'm, I got a replay on that one. Oh, Jared and Young is going to be called for the foul. I got a replay on that last play. And... Yeah, that back-to-back -back turnover there by the Mules. Hate to see Jared, and looks like he's down with an injury. It doesn't look like it's his bad knee. He's holding his other leg. Hopefully, maybe a yeah. We hope. no, he's up. He he's looks up. like he's up. Yeah. So trainer was quickly out there to take care of him, and I think that's his other leg. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it's scary for him anytime. Yeah, he comes it's gonna down be. Funny. It's gonna be the other. It's the left knee is what it looks like. Man, we hope he's okay. He's had a great first half. All of his points came in the first quarter of play. So Melvin Shaw is going to come in now. And he is going to shoot the free throws. Mules have over 10 fouls, so we have, we're in the double bonus now. Mules are down by three points. First one is up, and Melvin Shaw... Mules were up by double digits earlier. Now we're down by four. It's been a real letdown the last minute, the last two minutes. Two minutes have been, uh, we're going to have to regroup at halftime. Well, I'll tell you this, 
She won't like me saying this, but I'm going to blame my grandma Jackie on this. <laughs> Sounds like it's her fault to me. Gavin Rivers goes up and draws the foul. She don't like it when I blame her for stuff, and she's not here to defend herself. <laughs> well, you know, we've seen this, Frankie, several times this season where we have a bad quarter, about half a quarter, really kind of fall apart for a few minutes. But then the thing about this team is they're very resilient. They, they are. can go in halftime, coach and coach them up, and then come out and just tear it up. So I'm, I'm confident that they can come back uh, fine in the second half. So Gavin or, or Gage Rivers now, free throw line presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. First one is up. It's a big one. 5.3 seconds. All that remains, as you can see, the scoreboard there in the background. It's a nice feature that Tim added. And the rebound is no good. Goes to White. And at the buzzer, it's not going to fall. It is a 43-39 score. We're going to take a quick timeout. We're going to come right back. I've got my good friend Lonnie Taylor is going to join us coming up next. Don't go anywhere. A quick minute timeout. And we're going to come right back at halftime. You're listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we are back here live in Poplar Bluff, and we're going to bring in my good friend Lonnie Taylor is with us. And i tell you what, the hospitality room, you guys run it each and every year, is just a fantastic thing you guys do. And we're so happy that you guys are back this year. What was it like being gone last year? Well, it, we missed it. You know, we've done this about 34 years, so it was kind of a little bit different for us. Looking forward to coming back. Absolutely. We're glad to have you guys alongside. And, of course, everybody, all the coaches and everybody are just so happy that you're able to do this as well. And what was on what's, what was on the menu? I kind of missed everything tonight, being on the air for all the games. So what was on the menu tonight? Oh, we had about all kinds of food, from burgers to pizza to uh, Chinese, Mexican, uh, cookies, whatever you want just about we've had back there. And you, you want to give us some mentions on some of those businesses, or are we going to do that later on this week? Well, we'll do, I can name you some of them now. We had Donut House. We have um, Steak and Shake. They brought chili. Um, we have uh, Lemonade Grill. Buffalo Wild Wings. Nice. McDonald's. I missed out on all that tonight. You we got to figure out a way. I'm going to have to send John Scott down there tomorrow night for me because this ain't going to work. There you go. I think he'd make a good errand boy for you. I think he'd make a great errand. I'm <laughs> glad you said that he's right behind you. He may right. not believe what you said, but I'll let him know. Well, I think John can do it. And you'll be back tomorrow night with us? We will. Good. You'll bring that list tomorrow night? We'll, bring we'll, all we'll do a bigger segment tomorrow night. Okay. We look forward to seeing everyone you tomorrow night. You betcha. Lonnie Taylor joining us live here tonight with the Popper Bluff Showdown. And, of course, he does a great job in our hospitality room. They put an extra five minutes on the scoreboard tonight just because of our halftime performance. And what we will do is we'll take a quick timeout. We're going to come back, and we're going to regroup and get our stats ready to go, and we'll bring you back to halftime coming up in just a few moments. You're listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.
Kevin's Auto and Tire is a family-owned one-stop shop for fast, friendly, and affordable automotive services with the latest tools and technology as well as their time-tested automotive knowledge. They're guaranteed to get your vehicle fixed without breaking the bank. Eye Care Specialist is committed to the protection and the preservation of the precious gift of sight. Nothing is more important than your eyesight. That's the way the doctors of Eye Care Specialist see it. And we are back here live with your halftime report brought to you by Las Margaritas, Mayas, and Taco Taco. A good personal thank you going out to our good friend Lonnie Taylor who come by. He does this every showdown, every ball game, or every night rather. He'll come and join us at halftime of our Mules game. We always love having him aboard. And he told me an interesting fact while you were talking to Tim, John. He said tomorrow night we'll... Uh, We'll make you be the old gopher tomorrow night. Hey, that sounds fine to me. I'll bring two of everything. No, I was going to say, that gives you a reason to leave and go eat. <laughs> if I get stuck down in the hospitality suite, you might not see me for a while. I may not see you for a while. So let's talk about this game. The Mules were on an impressive start here tonight. And quickly, how things have really changed. Popper Bluff now is only up by four points with, you know, here we are at halftime. You look at Popper Bluff. They outscored Forest City 21-15. to But here is the, the difference. Forest City outscored the Mules at 28 to 18 there in that second quarter. And to me, it was about the turnovers the Mules committed late in that first half, which gave a lot of momentum going back to Forest City. Yes, and we've had a lot worse quarters before. You know, we had the one where we only scored four points. So yes. it's not as bad, but it's definitely a tale of, of two quarters that first half, and we were really in good shape. And then it just sort of fell apart to an abysmal two, three minutes there in the second quarter. But you know what? Get that out of your system. Come back out after halftime. I know Coach Durden will do a good job coaching them up and get back in the game. We just got a little bit out of control, had a few turnovers. Then we try to do too much. You know, you get kind of – a team like that will get kind of used to running the score, scoring points, running up and down, things going their way. They just get a little bit lax and a little bit out of control, and then they want to go back a little bit too much. So you can see that with some turnovers, some missed shots. You know, three rebounds down there. We didn't score. A right. couple of fouls. So, you know, uh, definitely was ugly there at the end. But I feel like we can play with this team. And uh, and I know we won't quit. We, we have not quit. It, these teams, the Mules don't quit the last several years I've been watching them. They, they, they might lose the game, but they're not going to quit. Absolutely. And let's talk about some of the numbers here real fast. You look at the four City Mustangs. They are shooting very well, 60% so far in this ball game. They are 12 out of 20, 5 and 9 from behind the arc. That's an important stat. 14 out of 19 on the free throw line first half. That's a big number. 11 rebounds, none when it comes to offensive rebounds. Only four first half assists, eight steals, and they've got the 12 turnovers. You look at their scoring tonight so far, and it really starts off with Keyshawn Washington, 12 points on the night. He's got one assist, two rebounds. From there, nine points by Robert Eccles. And then from there, eight by Marcus Britt. Two deep three-pointers in this ball game. That's been a big factor in this one as well. You look at Antonio Jordan, Lamari and Randall, each having three points. Two points by Makayan White. And four by Melvin Shaw, by the way. And then two by Servo Fisher. That is your entire scoring right now by this team out of Forest City. Now looking at Popper Bluff stat, they're also shooting very well. They are shooting 57%. They are 16 out of 28. They're 2 of 5 on from behind the arc. And they're 5 out of 9 on the free throw line. But once again, they've got 12 first half assists. Not bad. But here's a stat that really kind of gets you. Only 10 rebounds in the first half. They're being at rebounded minus 1 but only three offensive rebounds so far. Six steals. They've got eight turnovers. I'm okay with those numbers for now, but those free th the free throws have got to get better and more and more often coming up in the second half. Absolutely, Frankie. That's just what I was thinking when I listened to all your vol voluminous, whatever the word is, <laughs> stats. Free throws. That's the difference in the game, really, is the free throws. And uh, you know, we don't, we're not shooting enough of them, but when we are shooting them, we're not making enough of them. We need to get that percentage up. Uh, there's really no excuse for missed free throws nowadays. Uh, kids can shoot, practice. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to get to the line more. We're going to have to make those free throws and just 
play our game. You know, we got a little rattler at the end. We just got to play our game. Absolutely. You look at the scoring right now. Darian Webb having a great night. 14 points off the bench. Jared and Young, 8 points all coming in the first quarter, by the way. You look at off the bench, Darius Graham. He's got 6 points. Five points by Gage Rivers, and then two points by Gavin Rivers, also by Cannon Carr. I mean, Nick Brummett's got two points. Our bench production right now has been phenomenal. So far, 16 points in the first half, all off the bench. That number is pretty impressive if you're Coach Will Durden. Absolutely it is. You know, that's the good thing about this team. It's balanced. It's deep. He can play, you know, 10 players pretty easily and, and not lose a lot of uh, production. Uh, we need uh, the R Rivers kids who really are, are the heart and soul of the, of the team, and th they're doing a wonderful job in a lot of ways that don't show up in a stat book, but we need them to get hot. I'd like to see Gavin hit a couple threes. You know, I'd like to see Gage hit a three. Once those guys get going like that, nobody can stop them. Of Absolutely. course, uh, uh, you know, uh, Darian is just having a game, an excellent game, and he's really solid for the team. So nobody's, you know, nobody's playing poorly. Nobody's doing a bad job at all. We're playing very well, but we just need to, we need to tie a whole game together. Once we get toward the end of the season, we can tie a whole game together playing our game. We're going to be really hard to handle, just like last year toward the end of the season. So we got about four minutes here before halftime comes to an end. Look at that graphic right here on the screen. Is that not crisp? Very nice. Looks good. You know, I've seen a few streamed games here and there and watched a few of these because I've become more interested in it, and, and ours is really top-notch, what you guys do. Crystal clear, good angles, good camera work, everything. I want to take credit for it and say that I did all this, but the truth is I didn't do any of it. I, right. could, I can't do the computer part of things. I, I figured out who really runs this operation. I guarantee it you do. <laughs> so we'll take a quick... A two-minute timeout real fast. We're going to come back. We're going to reset everything, get ready for the second half. It is day one, game three, our last game of the night. We're going to come right back. Mules trail by four against Four City. You're listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers is a third-generation family-owned jewelry and repair store who have served the Poplar Bluff community for over 60 years. Our family has always worked hard to provide the finest jewelry creations and service imaginable. Las Margaritas and Mayas, serving up the best authentic Mexican food since 1997. The Esquivel family, always proud to support our Poplar Bluff mules. We are back here live in Poplar Bluff, and we're getting ready now for the second half. I'm John Scott. No, I'm not. I'm Frankie Castile. You're John Scott. Wait a minute. I'm not sure what I was doing there. <laughs> I thought I was hearing things for a second. It's been a long night. I thought, am I talking already? I no, you're not talking already. <laughs> we're getting ready for the second half, and for the Mules, we're going to have the same starting five that we had to begin the ball game. Looking over at Forest City, we'll see who they come out with. They are right now... 
they've got the momentum right now. They do lead this game by four points. And you look at what the Mules have been through. Same starting five for both teams. We're going to switch sides. Mules now will go left to right on your radio dial. So here we go. Forest City slaps the ball, and we are under underway. Oh, Mules coming up with a quick steal right off the bat. You know, Frank, you always say that, and you hear it a lot on radio, but is, are there really that many radio dials <laughs> anymore? <laughs> not really. Not that much anymore. 747, and we got a whistle and a foul. I'll tell you what, in the first 13 seconds, Popper Bluff, Coach Durden, he's got his team fired up. And they said that foul was on number 15. That There's not a 15 out there right now. We'll see if they get that changed. It was on four City. Gage Rivers gets a wide open lane. It's going to be ripped away by Randall. On the other end, down the floor, it is uh, Antonio Jordan. And now it is back to a 45-39 lead. And there's a quick bucket for the Mules. So Mule's going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It is now 45-41. to 41. It's a family show, Frankie, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> I can see that very clearly from here. <laughs> We're going to say that was going to be on Rivers. He was trying everyone in the world not to foul the guy. Yes, they called he was. 45-41 the score. Free throw is up, and it is good by Antonio Jordan. He's got six points. Once again, we appreciate everybody tuning in on social media tonight. Second one is no good. Offensive rebound, though, by White. Appreciate you tuning in, whether you're tuning in from Forest City, Arkansas, or listening right here in Popper Bluff. Oh, Brummett's going to be, oh, it's not going to be a foul. It's going to be a travel call instead on Eccles. And we're going to see coming in at Torrance Williams for Fentress Williams. Nice to see Shelby Seavers here tonight, Coach Seavers' daughter. I think I've seen uh, Sierra as well. Darian Webb, long pass to Gavin Rivers. Gavin somehow maintains his dribble. Now Darian Webb going down the lane, high off the backboard, but another offensive board by Nick Brummett. Gavin, or make that Gage Rivers for three is too strong. And the rebound is going to be taken by Eccles. 46-41, the Mules are down by five. 6-21 to play here in the third. Long three-pointer by Washington. It's no good, but the offensive rebound, it is there for Randall. Yeah, that's a good timeout, Coach. Yeah. That's uh, that's a... That that rebound's unacceptable. Offensive rebound shouldn't happen. 48-41 the score now with 6-11 remaining here in the third quarter. Popper Bluff coming in this ball game are 6-2. You look at the Mustangs are 5-3. It is just past 8 o'clock on this Monday night, our first night of the Popper Bluff Showdown. Last game of the evening. We're back at it again tomorrow, same time, right around 3.45. We got started just a little bit late today, only because we hadn't got everything we needed to get going. Somebody was dragging their feet a little bit. I won't name names. It may have been me. But we got on about five minutes to the top of the hour. We had that banquet today, and that's what did it. So we're going to blame it on Kent Keith, even that's, though it's not really his that, fault. Well, he takes any, all blame for anything athletics related. Exactly. It was a great banquet, by the way. They did a phenomenal job. Kent Keith and company, they, they all stepped up, and the hospitality was wonderful. What a move by Torrance Williams. Good assist by Gavin, or make that, yeah, by Gavin Rivers. That was a good play. Yes, it was. Sorry. Listen, you cut me off any time. I'll shut up. If you listen, you're the man. Oh, what a block by Darius Graham. Are you kidding me? Hmm. Hmm. Darius Graham goes up, and he blocks a shot. We do that a lot. We get a 
great turnover, and we were going to get a breakaway dunk right there and then and then turn it over again. It's unfortunate. That would have been really nice to light this crowd up. It would have it would have definitely lit the crowd up for sure. Washington now goes inside. Eccles is not going to be able to hit it, and Nick Brummett comes up with the rebound. There's a nice job by Darian Webb. You bet you, Torrance Williams wide open. Now it's a three-point lead again. 48-45, Williams, four points on two possessions. Good to see Torrance get, get a taste, get a couple of buckets, kind of get back in the swing. Another of steal by Gavin Rivers. Gavin, he goes coast to coast. Torrance Williams, though, thought he had the good position. And it's going to be given right back to the Mules. Boy, there are stretches where Popper Bluff, the way they play, I mean, they are one of the fastest teams you're going to see around here. And Five. Al almost really worked. Torrance, he just really needed to catch that, come down with it, go back up with it. But he's running the floor really well. He really is. Darius Graham now under five minutes to play here in the third quarter. Darian Webb, 14 points in all. He draws the contact. He is so good at drawing contact when he gets inside the paint. He is our best free throw shooter by far. It's going to be a foul on Antonio Jordan. And so now Darian Webb to the free throw line presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. For the season, he is 85% on the year. He is 2 of 2 tonight. He'll get two more right now to try to trim this lead down just a little bit. They trail by three. First one is on the way. It is no good. A rare miss. Very rare miss. We're going to see Roberson getting to come in now for Gavin Rivers. Marlon, my man Marlon. I like to see Marlon yes. play. Our student section very creative here tonight. Webb, 15 points on the night. He's averaging 15 for the season. It must be favorite jersey night here at the gym. <laughs> yeah, I saw a couple of jerseys there, and I thought, what are these kids doing? Now they've all got them on, so it makes sense. Miss by Eccles. Good job by the Mules on the rebound. Roberson now going inside the paint. Yes, sir. Like to see that right off the bench. Knocks it down. Look at the score now, folks. 48-48. Another steal by Darius Graham. Mules are forcing those turnovers. Graham inside the paint. Going to be a little bit short. It's rebounded by Washington. Here comes Eccles all the way in. It's no good. Rebounded by who else? Darius Graham. Man, these teams are up and down so fast. Torrance Williams, what a catch by Darian Webb. Torrance Williams, he has come alive in this half. Six points in this quarter alone. I love our crowd. They are just so into this ballgame. Look at the steal by Darian Webb. You betcha. Oh, Webb couldn't finish. Torrance Williams could not finish either. Roberson with a block. Oh, my goodness. Roberson is going to get the credit for the block, and it's going to go out of bounds on, on Four City. Melvin Shaw going to check in. Here comes Servo Fisher as well. He'll come in for Lamarian Randall. Mules lead by two again. What a what a half right now by the Mules. Well, up and down, really a frenetic pace. Very quick. McBrummett kicks it outside to Graham. Graham missing that shot. Rebounded here by, oh, good oh, spin Lord. move. He was out of control. He got bailed out by the foul. You know, Darius hits a lot of threes. Hits yes. a lot of threes in practice, and he's in the games. He's had that team's been getting a little bit of heat because he's missing them, but he keeps shooting because once he gets on, he's gonna. He's gonna Fortunately, knock the he's out not of hit one in the game yet, but that will change at some point. Absolutely, it will. First one is up. It's good by Antonio Jordan. That foul, last foul, by the way, was on the Mules. Tie ball game. Yeah, that's not right. They called they called that last foul. They're saying number five on the mules. He just checked in, so. so K 
Sage Rivers back in the ball game. Nick Brumman out there as well. Torrance Williams could not finish. It's a little bit fancy. Oh, the Mules again. Oh. We're going to get a whistle here on Gage Rivers. 50-50 is the score. So Antonio Jordan. Darian Webb is going to check back in. Webb, he has been the spark right now for this Mules offense. Under three to play here in the third. Washington, got to watch him from outside. Oh, we're going to get a foul on Torrance. A reach-in foul. His third. Team foul number three. Darian Webb now going to check in for the Mules. Torrance Williams will come out. It takes a lot of energy to get you know get out of that deficit from half. And yes, our guys are a little bit tired right now. The inbound to Fisher. Fisher is going to go up, and he will draw the foul. I believe it's going to be on Brummett. It'll be his third. Tomorrow afternoon, we will start our broadcast. Well, first off, tomorrow morning, we'll start our broadcast at 10 a.m. for the three-point slam dunk contest. And then after that, 345 for the remainder of the day. First free throw is up. It's good by Fisher. And now, once again, at Four City, they take the lead. Are you one of the judges tomorrow for the three-point contest or slam dunk contest, rather? I am not, actually. I uh, I do have some work obligations that I have to make sure. <laughs> I didn't want. I could probably be back, but I want. I didn't want to cut it close. Um, so uh, I'm going to save my judging for my I boys still, for later in the day. I, I still think you should probably participate in the, th the slam dunk contest. <laughs> Get out there and show these boys how it's done. I need one of those little. Uh, uh, miniature bungee. trampolines? Yeah, miniature trampoline. I get one chance and then call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a move by Gage Rivers to a wide open Darius Graham. Boy, I tell you what, Gage Rivers, the way he can distribute the basketball is so great for this Mules team. He's improved his game immensely. He really way. has. Oh, my goodness. Marcus Britt, he's got ice in his veins. Another big, long three-pointer. They lead by three again. He's got 11 points in this game. Gage Rivers now is going to have it ripped away by Britt. And just like that, going the other direction now. Shaw, it is now a five-point lead. Still plenty of time to go in this ballgame. Mule's got to slow it down just a little bit. They got pretty aggressive on that last possession. Darian Webb outside to Darius Graham. Graham goes up, and you betcha. And they call a foul as well. 57-54. Count the basket and the foul. It's going to be on Fisher. We'll take that. It's going to be away from the ball, away from the basket rather, but the bucket will count. So the Mules get a new possession on this. Oh, what a move. Oh, the Mules could not finish. Ventress was wide open yeah, and could little, not finish. A little too open. Sometimes that happens. You turn around and nobody's there, and it's really hard. Yeah. You ask yourself, I'm not going to miss this like, shot, and then you do. Fisher, I think he tr is going to be a timeout. Yep, going to be a timeout called for Forest City. That being said, we are going to keep it here, I believe. We'll see what kind of timeout it is. And we will keep it right here. 121 to play here in the third quarter. Mules trail by a score of 57-54. The Mules right now shooting 50% on the night. 23 out of 46. 19 assists, though, here in the, in the ball game. Forest City only has six assists. You look at turnovers right now. The Mules have 10, John. Forest City, 17. For right now, I'm okay with the amount of turnovers we have just because we're going so fast-paced and we are getting so many people involved. 19 assists, and we still have some time left in this third quarter. Yeah, the stats all sound really good except for the score. <laughs> That's the only problem. That's only the only three. problem. Only down three, but all those stats are they're good, man. We've got good assists. You know, we're making shots. We're, we're running up and down. We're doing it, but it's just uh, we got to convert that to points. And guard that guy shooting threes. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Marcus Britt put a body on him. So now Antonio Jordan. 
Going to get a good screen by Fisher. Going inside. Going to be ripped away by Darius Graham. Graham flying through the air. He's got a dozen. That guy should be a long jumper. Yes, he should. He can fly through the air. Under a minute now. Mules have cut it down to one point. Tell you what, this Forest City team, they play hard. They do not come in. You're not going to walk all over them. I don't care who you are. Absolutely. May not be the tallest team out there, but they're going to play. They're fast. And they shoot it. They're shooting at a very good percentage tonight, 53% to be exact. Cannon Carr, Torrance Williams are going to check in coming in. Washington kicks it outside, three-point basket. It is off the mark, but another offensive rebound by Fisher, and that hurts you. That offside rebound, yeah, that shouldn't happen. That's just a position rebound. So now on the other end, three-point basket by Britt. Thankfully, he misses this one, but he got the rebound. Woo! Boy, the Mules are fortunate to come up with it. Darius, or Gage Rivers, rather. Mules lead by one, and Gavin Rivers coming away, stealing it at the last moment. Mules lead by one. Can we do one more quarter like this, John? <laughs> or can, you, can I wave the white flag, TKO? I'm going to have to take another one of my thumbs here. <laughs> Get I tell you what, we're going to readjust ourselves. Coming up, it's going to be an exciting fourth quarter. Mules a trail or make that lead by one. You're listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. This is where it's done. The training, the work, the commitment, the sacrifice. So when these athletes hit the court, they are ready. Mules get it done. All right, as we get ready now for the fourth and final quarter. Forest City. With the ball right now. I'm getting a text message from our presiding commissioner, Vince Lampy, who is tuning in tonight. That's good. Hey, Vince, how you doing, bud? I got a I got a pothole out in front of my house. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, it was windy last night. I think it blew. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, what a good job by the Mules. Ah, Shaw Fisher is going to be called. Count the basket. 59 to 58. Gage Rivers is going to be called for the personal foul. Do you have a height on that kid? On a, on on uh, on Shaw yes. or on, on, on Fisher rather? Yes, I absolutely do. He's a he's a big lad. Yes, he is six foot three. Six three looks bigger than that. He looks bigger than that, but they got him listed six Ooh. three. Ooh, a little bit of extracurricular there. I would imagine he's probably pretty good on the football field. Oh, absolutely. They're going to call that on Washington. I'm sorry, six five. Six, that I was looking at the wrong line. 6'5 is who they've got him listed as. But the same height as Torrance. But I bet you Torrance might be better on the football field. Yes, yes. I think you might be Gage right. Gage River steps inside that three-point arc and drains a long two-pointer. Mules now lead it once again by one. And this game is going to be fun the rest of this game. We're going back and forth now. They both slowed it down a little bit, playing a little more half-court offense, which... I think favors us against this team. I do too. There's another steal by Darian Webb. Webb is going to go coast to coast. He will draw the foul. If that's on Washington, that's number four on him. And I believe it's going to be on Washington. It is. And that should be number four on him. We've gotten a lot of steals on that half-court offense. We yes, just we have. It. 
So fourth foul. So now Darian Webb, who's averaging 15 points a ball game, stepping up for two free throws presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. First one is up. You betcha. So a lot of a lot of misdirection here coming in to 22 Washington. Danya Washington is going to check in. Gavin Rivers is going to take a seat. And Darian Webb. Shooters Six, roll. 62 59 the score now. Torrance Williams staying in the ball game. Darius Graham as well. He is having quite the night so far. Nick Brummett back out there as well. Mules lead it by three. Can the Mules kind of inch this gap a little bit wider than what it is right now? That is the question. We had it up at 10 points at one point. So now Eccles, he's got nine points here in the ball game. Marcus Britt's out there. He's got 11. Britt, he is able to knock down those three-point shots. He is the coach's son, by the way. Of course, Coach Lofton passed away earlier this year for Forest City. They did a great moment of silence for him earlier tonight, along with Maurice Webb, a Popper Bluff native who lost his life earlier this year as well. Good job by the Mules defensively. Oh, yes. a foul. Oh, is it going to be a, a charge? Yep. It's going to be a charge on Randall. Darian Webb. I hope he's not hurt. Boy, he took a shot. He did take a shot. And Gavin Rivers is going to come in. We may see Webb take a seat for a moment. I think he's got maybe a busted lip. Yep. But boy, he took a shot right there. It takes guts to stand there and take that. Luckily for him, not bleeding or anything. Just He's going to come right back in. Just came out for a play or two. Make sure you have all his teeth and oh, come back in. <laughs> he took a shot from Randall. Good job by the Mules. Brummett is going to have it stripped away. Oh, 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 my goodness. On the other end, a hard foul. On the other end, Eccles is on the floor, on the court, rather. It's going to be a foul on Gavin Rivers. That's number three for him. You hope he's okay. You don't want to see anybody get hurt. So Gavin Rivers. So Eccles now will shoot two free throws. It is a three-point game. Darian Webb is going to check in on this next play. And first one rims out. It's no good. So Darian Webb now going to come in for Nick Brummett. Very interesting here. The Mules have... We're going very small with the exception of Torrance out there at 6'5". Absolutely. You know, Darius uh, Graham has really given us some good minutes tonight. He's played he a lot of minutes, and he's played very well. I'll get you that exact number after this free throw as he knocks down Darius Graham right now. Still out there for Poplar Bluff. Darius Graham over 15 minutes right now. That's way above his average but he is playing some really good ball tonight 12 points and what do we have got a foul here by Forest City it's going to be on number 11 got him on number 11 here it's going to be on Antonio Jordan I think coach has got the right rotation he's figured out he needs to run small on this team I think we're bigger overall still, but he's got our small guys out there. We can handle them defensively. So Marcus Britt is going to take a seat for the time being. Darian Webb free throw presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. Knocks it down. 18 points now for him. We're going to see Melvin Shaw come back in the ball game. Antonio Jordan is going to take a seat. He's got the four fouls. Washington, though, he is back in. He's got four fouls. Boom. Darian Webb knocks it down. Five minutes now to go in the ballgame. Mules lead by four. Mules trying to get their seventh win of the season. 
Gage Rivers, good defense by him. It's going to be a carry on Eccles. Another turnover. Mules have 11 turnovers. The Mustangs, they've got 21 turnovers. You having fun tonight at the showdown? Absolutely, Frank. I'm loving it. I'm loving every bit of this. There's a quick steal. Webb turns it. Oh, my goodness. What a move by Darius Graham. <laughs> Maybe he'll be in the dunk contest tomorrow. My goodness gracious. Ooh. Yeah. Going to be an offensive foul. On Gage, yes, charge. On Gage, it and that's number was. four on him. Well, it's as much fun as one can have on a Monday oh, night, I'm right, Frankie? You. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. 64-60 coming up on the 420 mark here in the fourth. So now Shaw gets it back out top of the key to Washington. He's got four fouls too. Several players now coming in foul trouble on both sides of the ball. Washington three-pointer going to be a little short. This time the rebound goes to Gavin Rivers. You know who I feel bad for? We get to sit down all night long. I feel bad for Tim. <laughs> He's had to stand up literally all day. I know, that's not fair. He runs the whole thing and has to stand up. I'm not sure if I like that <laughs> comment or not. <laughs> huh. Darius, Darius, Darian Webb out to Gavin Rivers. A little bit short, a little too strong that time. Rebounded by Randall. Once again, here comes Eccles. Oh, my goodness, he is blocked. by Gavin Rivers. Man, the Mules are playing some very good defense here of late. A lot of blocked shots tonight. You got that stat? Nope. What was, what was the block, question, sir? Blocked shots. Blocked yep. shots. Mules have tonight four blocked shots in this ball game. Eccles is going to be calling for a second personal foul. Cannon Carr is back in tonight. Darian Webb is back in at the free throw line presented by Christian Automotive and Tire knocking down the first one. Darian Webb, it seems like tonight we have had quite a few, quite a few players above 20 points. Darian Webb can add his name to that list tonight because he's got 21. Good game. Good game for Darian. Yes, it is. Yolanda Clark says, finish strong, Popper Bluff. You betcha. They're up by six. She also liked the big block earlier. Shaw with an offensive rebound. Goes back up top. He's got two more points. Shaw now. 66-62 is the score. Oh, Brum is going to be blocked from behind. And it's going to be taken away by Randall. Three-point basket is on the way. It's no good by Eccles. That was good work by Darius. He, yes, got, he got up on that guy. Didn't let him get an easy shot. 2.49 is all that remains. And we can close the door on night number one. On the inbound, Marcus Britt. Shot is up. It's no good. So now the Mules. Darian Webb. No look pass to Darius Graham. Graham goes up again. 14 points. Very nice. Very nice. And we're going to get a timeout here. 68-62 is the score right now. Popper Bluff. They are having a field day up by six points with 2.27 left to play in this ball game. Mules have two to make that one timeout left. The Mustangs, they've only got three timeouts left. So Popper Bluff now with just one timeout left. Three timeouts is all that remains for the Forest City Mustangs. So tomorrow, let's tell you real quickly about the schedule. 
We'll get started at 10 a.m. with the three-point slam dunk contest. And then coming up tomorrow night at 4 p.m., we've got Forest City against Southside. That'll be a good matchup, I think. You've got Overton against Fayetteville. And then our matchup, Popper Bluff, Haywood at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. And then on Tuesday, or make that Wednesday, the Mules are going to play at 7.30. Or 2.30, 2.30. Early bird special. The early bird special. Two twenty-seven remaining here in the ball game as Popper Bluff leads by six points. And if you can't come out tomorrow and watch us or watch this game live in person, I think John Scott will be here tomorrow night with me. We'll have you covered on the air as well as on Facebook and on YouTube. I'll go get a couple shots of that uh, ginger ginger juice. For I'm lunch telling tomorrow. you, I, I'm, trying, I, I'm trying to conserve <laughs> my voice a little bit because I know when it's all said and done, Gavin Rivers back in the ball game picks up another foul. He's got four now. Now we're going to see coming in now, White going to come in for Randall. I know what's going to happen on Wednesday. I, I'm not going to have much of a voice left, but that's okay. We sign up for that. Free throw is up and good by Keyshawn Washington. Darius Graham back in the ball game now. He'll come in for Nick Brummett. I'll tell you what, Darius Graham, he has earned every minute here tonight. This is his career game as well. He's really come come together on a, on a night when we needed him, and he stepped up. Yes, he Absolutely. has. To cut this to a four-point game, Washington does. 2:09 to play here in the ball game. Mules lead it 68-64. Can the Mules hang on? What a move by Darian Webb. He's got 23. Gage Rivers is going to get the assist. Great assist by Gage. My really goodness. good. That's real basketball. There's basketball and there's real basketball. That was real basketball. What I like for the Mules, 22 assists in this ball game. That's a season high for them. When they share the basketball, when they get over 16 assists, they are undefeated so far this year. Be hard to handle if they can do that. Now a lot of time still left to go. Like that right there, Eccles. They're oh, they're going to wave it off in a travel. Another turnover. And we're going to get a whistle here, and we're going to get yet again another timeout. So we'll step away with this timeout. We're going to come right back. 137 left. Mules lead by six on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. Want a career and not just another job? It's waiting for you at Briggs & Stratton. Great pay, great benefits, and continuing education. Everything you and your family deserve. 137 is all that remains here in this ballgame. And Popper Bluff leads it by 670 to 64. We have had some really good ball games here in night number one. So honored that we're able to bring this game to you on the radio as well as on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. It's at River Radio PB. That's River Radio PB is where you can find these ball games. Might call that a makeup call. <laughs> I think you're right. But I'll take that because it can weigh the bucket off. So, you know, <laughs> fair trade. Each team with eight fouls here in this half. Eccles, no look pass, outside to Britt for three. Off the mark, it's no good. And we're going to get a whistle here and a foul coming up against the Mules. Maybe Darian Webb, maybe. No, it's going to be on Darius Graham, his first personal foul. And that's going to put Marcus Britt, or make that Eccles on the free throw line. Another offensive rebound.
I'm just overwhelmed with, honestly, we, we've said this all night, but it's just, a, just a, a, a unique experience with all the people that are watching right now on YouTube and Facebook. It's so amazing on how many people were reaching outside of Popper Bluff. We've had all the way as far away as Washington State tuning in tonight. Absolutely, Frankie. It's, the, it's how it is now. Information everywhere, technology, how it is. There's no reason somebody's grandparent, aunt, uncle, whoever can't watch their, watch their family member play basketball. Going to call a full timeout here, so we'll keep it here with 123 left. The Mules tonight shooting 53% overall. That's incredible. 12 of 17 on the free throw line, 23 rebounds, 14 turnovers. But what I like about this team, they've got eight offensive rebounds, 22 assists on the defensive side. They have also forced 22 turnovers. Oh, by the way, we lead by four points. We really ought to be up more. <laughs> Based on the stats, if you looked at those stats without the score, you would think it's about a 15-point game. No, I, I agree a thousand percent with you. But I, but the Mules, I mean, it, I, do, do you think that nerves might be a little bit of playing into this game because it is our first game at home this season in front of a good crowd? Yeah, I think so. They came out really fast and, and did it played really well early in the game. That takes a lot of energy, you know, and there's a little bit of a letdown. The thing's getting a little bit unraveling. So it's just settling in, getting used to playing at home. You know, sometimes it's hard. Absolutely. 123 now. Here we go. Mules are up by four. It is 70 to 66. I'd just run the clock all the way down. I would run as much as I could, but then I got to find Darian Webb and get him the ball. <laughs> you want the shot clock. Oh, hit him you or Gage Rivers. Clock. Gage Rivers, though, he gets Ooh, away. Nick nice. Gage. It's going to score. Very nice. He's got 11. And a turn. Oh, it's going to be a turnover. That's a costly turnover. That one is going to be called on Antonio Jordan. Just got a little too close, too close to the edge over there. 23 turnovers in this game 23. by Forest City. That's very uncharacteristic for them. Darian Webb, he gets a little bit of space. And a foul is going to be called on White, and that's going to put Darian Webb back on the free throw line. 23 points on the night so far. 23 turnovers kind of reminds me of my coaching stint in the upward basketball. <laughs> kids when my son was little. Brock Littles, Brock Littles and I coached, and it was pretty funny. So Darian Webb now going to the free throw line. 23 points on the night. Foul was on Makayan White. Webb misses that free throw, a rare miss by him. He typically doesn't miss a lot of free throws. 42 seconds now in counting. It's going to go out of bounds, last touch, and it's going to belong to the Mules. And we're going to get a sub coming in. Gavin Rivers will take a seat. Cannon Carr going to come in. Am I seeing Gavin? Is Gavin hobbling a little bit? I think he is on that left ankle. Is that right? Yeah, it looks like he is. Looks like he's uh, grabbing that left ankle. We'll keep you updated on that. We haven't seen Jared in much second half. No, we either. haven't. A little worried about his knee, his good knee. He's on the bench at the very end of the bench by your son. By the way, how is your son? When's he going to be back with us? I think he'll, he's not going to be back this week, but I think I think the next game is the 18th of January, yep. and he, he should be hopefully good to go by good. then. He's been out of the boot for a week and a half doing gotcha. physical therapy, that sort of thing. So fifth foul on Antonio Jordan. He is going to foul out. I've got Gage Rivers now. He's going to shoot two free throws presented by Christian Automotive and Tire. Drains the first one. I've got on my roster that uh, that your boy is 6'10". <laughs> is that think, right? With the hair. Oh, with the hair. <laughs> with gotcha. The hair. Gotcha. <laughs> I told him no man buns. He could grow it as much as he wants, just no man no buns. No man buns. I would try to cut it. He probably wouldn't be able to. I'd have to climb a ladder. 14 <laughs> seconds left in this ball game. Marcus Britt going to miss the reverse layup. Brummett. Gets the rebound. The Mules escape their first win tonight of this showdown. 74-66 is the win. Paul Springs says, good effort, Forest City. You betcha. Forest City is not a team I want to mess with. They are a really well-coached basketball team. They play very, very hard. 
And I'm telling you, they're not going to go 0-3 this tournament. No. They're going to they're win some games. Good, they e are, good effort tonight by the team. Good it effort. really is. 74-66 is the final. Popper Bluff getting their seventh win of the season. Coming up, we're going to talk to, I believe, one of our coaches, and then we'll end the broadcast. I appreciate the opportunity tonight, John. Glad we'll to see be you here. back here tomorrow Glad night. Glad to be here, Frankie. Thank you. You betcha. John Scott joining us live. We'll let him get back to his family. We appreciate him helping us out. Coach Britt, just a, a standout guy for sure for Four City. Now, we're not sure if we're going to see one of our coaches or not. We'll wait for just a minute. And we may or may not get one of our coaches to come up and talk with us. If we do, we will bring one of our coaches up here and kind of talk to him for just a bit and ask him about this game. Mules do get the victory. Our seventh win of the season, Popper Bluff, is now 7-2 here tonight, or after tonight's game, rather. Tomorrow night, we're going to play same time, 7 o'clock. It's just going to be a new opponent coming up tomorrow night. We've got Haywood. Haywood, by the way, they played earlier today, and it was a good game back and forth. Haywood is going to bring out a lot coming out in Popper Bluff tomorrow night. We will see what that game entails I don't yet we will. So we are going to have a coach here coming in tonight. So Mules getting a big win. Ron Winthrow says, boom, you bet you. I'll get these booms right later on. We'll welcome in assistant coach Aaron Duncan tonight, coach. Popper Bluff first off got up by 10 points, and then in the blink of an eye, four city come back. They got up by five points, but your mules never gave up. They never let the amount get to them. They stay within themselves, eventually pulling out an eight-point win. Talk about this game against Four City here tonight. Yeah, it was just back and forth, and, you know, we played good in stretches, and at times we didn't. Um, you know, we talked about it for the game. They're going to push it in transition. They're going to try to get to the rim off, of, uh, off the break, and, uh, you know, they did in the first half had, like, I don't know, 22 points off turnovers or something. And, you know, we just, we, I don't know, we just didn't play with a lot of energy right there in some, in some stretches. And it gave them some life, and we let them hang around. And, and like I said, we got down, and then, you know, we just got greedy and, and got tough there for five minutes and, and come back on them and, uh, you know, came out with a win. Let me ask you a couple of key things here. First off, what about Jared and Young's good leg? It seemed like he was bothered by the knee. Can you tell me any information on that? I mean, uh, not a lot. It looked like maybe he just came down straight-legged and, and might have just hyperextended it a little bit. Uh, but uh, it's it's stiffening up, and, you know, we just thought it would be best to just let him, uh, you know, let him ice it and rest and, ev and evaluate it again And tomorrow. toward the end of the game, we've seen Gavin Rivers going for his left ankle. What about that injury? He just squeezed his ankle a little bit uh, two times, and uh, he'll be fine. Now, talk about players in this game that really made a difference. Talk about, we're going to get to Darian Webb in just a moment. Darius Graham, 14 points on the night, five boards. He shot the ball very, very well. Three assists. It was a team effort. Talk about him for just a moment. He's, he's, um, he's just trying to find his way. Um, and, uh, you, know, I, you know, I don't know. And he'll tell you this, too, that he, he probably don't feel like he's in great basketball shape yet, but he's getting there. And, uh, you know, he's been in a gym at the last, you know, in these days that we've had off since Waynesville, getting a lot of shots up. And I uh, told him this morning it's going to pay off. And, um, you know, the thing about it, he, he got down here and got a big block on a layup. And uh, it seemed like he – I told him a while ago he had at least six or seven deflections in the second half. And um, when he's active and getting down garden like that, um, you know, he's real athletic. Uh, you know, he got the ball on a break several times. Uh, I think one time, I, I think it was 50 to 50 or 40, 50, 48, we were down. He got mm -hmm. the ball on a break and uh, got a steal or something down here and went and got a layup. And, uh, you know, just on just pure, I'm going to go get it. And uh, that's just what he brings. And, um, you know, it just the sky's the limit for him. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of potential. And so, uh, you know, that's really that's what we expect from him. What about Darian Webb tonight? 23 points, but it wasn't to me, Coach. It wasn't the points he scored, but check this out. Seven assists, six boards, and oh, by the way, uh, top it all off, nine of 11 on the free throw line. This young man, he has been doing it year in and year out. 23 points tonight. What a game for, for Darian Webb. And, 
and uh, I called this play, and we ran it three straight times. He had three straight threes. Mm. And um, so, I mean, he just put in a lot of time in the gym, and um, it just it pays off and it shows. Um, and, you know, he, he landed down here in the, fir- in, uh, in the first half on that layup he got where he got fouled and mm-hmm. kind of tweaked his wrist. But, he, uh, you know, he just comes back out, he just keeps playing, and he's just gritty like that. And, um, you know, I played with his dad in high school, and, we were teammates and we coached together at the beginning of my career, and, and he was just like that too. He just gritty, and um, you just he just not gonna let anything get by you, um, and and that's just what he brings to the table. And all the all the time, I think I said this down at at the conference tournament uh, about him, all the time and effort that he's put in throughout his life is is uh, you know is paying off. You can just see it. You can see the uh, results of it, and that's what that's what hard work and and you know time and and effort will do. You know, for you. Absolutely. Um, you know, we played that game at, against Cape down there at the conference tournament, mm-hmm. and he led us in rebounds. Yep. I mean, he's small suit on court, and just like tonight, six rebounds and whatever his stat line was. I mean, it's just, and it's a quiet 23. You're like, where, when did he get 23? But he did, and he's not really worried about all that, you know. Um, but uh, that's what he's capable of doing, and he, he's just a leader by example. Give us, give us your thoughts work, tomorrow it? afternoon or tomorrow evening. We're going to take on Haywood. You watched them earlier like I did, and they're a good ball team. They're not going to be an easy out. They're kind of like this team tonight. I mean, they're guard-oriented, and, um, you know, uh, they've got, they've got uh, you know, four or five. they got uh, uh, that kid in the paint, the 6'4 kid that's really athletic. Um, so, I mean, we're going to have to keep them off the glass, and, and they're going to try to dribble drive. It's going to be the same kind of style of team. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to get back on defense. We can't give up transition baskets. Those are just easy buckets that you, you can't afford to give up. And, you know, you're not going to beat good teams like that. So, you know, we're going to have to get back. We're going to play good help side defense, force the ball sideline, and keep them out of the middle. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, my, my toughest question for you, Coach, if you can give me the Scott Law Group LLC player of the game, a lot to choose from here tonight, a lot of contributors. Who stands out in your mind deserves this player of the game tonight? I'd say, uh, you know, Darren Webb and Darius Graham, uh, those two stand out the most. So um, We'll give it to them. Two. All right, Coach, thank you for the time. We'll see you tomorrow night. Okay, man, thank you. You betcha. Assistant Coach Aaron Duncan joining us live on the postgame, brought to you by the Ozark Federal Credit Union as the Mules getting a big win tonight. They go on to win by a final score of 74-66. to Mules now get their seventh win of the year. They go to 7-2, and and, of course, you look at four city they now drop to five and four and what a ball game here tonight what a great night for high school basketball real quickly let's go through the stat lines the mules shot the ball 54 percent they were two out of eight from behind the arc 14 out of 20 on the free throw line 20 percent or make that 70 percent they had 24 rebounds 22 assists 14 turnovers four block shots 12 steals By the way, the Mules defense forcing 23 turnovers tonight. Tim's over here yawning like he's tired. Looking at the stat line, Darian Webb led the way 23 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds. From there, it was 14 by Darius Graham off the bench. You also had 13 by Gage Rivers. He also had 7 assists, 1 rebound. And then you look at the scoring lines other places. 6 points by Torrance Williams also tonight. You had two points by Gavin Rivers, also by Cannon Carr, four points by Nick Brummett. And then, of course, we're also thinking about Jared and Young had eight points here tonight. Those eight points came in the first quarter of play. And, of course, after that, he was injured and he did not play most of the second half. So that, there is your scoring breakdown for the night. And, of course, coming up here later on tomorrow, we will have for you Mules Basketball back at you. And, of course, tomorrow night, we are going to be set to go once again. Same time, right about 3.45 or so. We'll make sure tomorrow that we are good to go right at that time. So that way, 
will be able to bring you in and get you all the information that you need. So that way we will be ready to go tomorrow afternoon beginning at about 445 or make that 345 tomorrow for more of your Popper Bluff Mules basketball. What a first night this has been with our showdown. So much fun. We're so glad that you were able to tune in and listen to us live as the Mules get their seventh win on the night. Real quickly, I want to say thank you again to the Popper Bluff R1 School District. Also, our Chief Engineer, Charlie Lampy, Our Sales Manager, Cheresca Stockton. General Manager, John Rice. Tim Hicks, once again, a phenomenal job on the camera. And, of course, thank you to you guys at home listening on the radio, watching us on Facebook or YouTube. Without you, we would not be able to put this on and do this. And we were just blown away by all of the response on Facebook and YouTube. Let's keep this going tomorrow. And if you can't make it out tomorrow, it is going to be raining tomorrow, by the way. So if you can't make it out, that's okay. We will we'll have you covered all the way around. All three games will be live right here on Facebook and YouTube. And then, of course, tomorrow morning, Tim and I will have a short night. We'll be back tomorrow morning at about 10 o'clock for the three-point slam dunk contest. I'll see you back here tomorrow night. I'm Frankie Castile. You've been listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network.